Sir, you're charged with especially aggravated kidnapping. You're also charged with aggravated assault. And you're charged with theft of a firearm worth less than $2,500. You're talking about stuff that is not relevant. Hello and welcome to the Court of Public Opinion. I am the recovery addict and boy do I have a case for you today. Why is a dog Whoa. chewing on this guy? I think they have got the wrong guy they there. the wrong guy and the dog was, was biting him. He roughing him up quite a bit. There's a lawsuit. This is the next search on February 28, 2020. 7.44 p.m. How period does the FBI find people? And people's misspelled P-E-O-O-P-L-E. Did the defendant find out how the FBI finds people in this case? Oh, she found out. Good morning! Good Monday morning. It is great to be here. Happy Monday, everyone. Let's see. Turned on the last few machines. We're going to get there. Uh, it's thinking about it. Hang on, hang on. Just wait for it. There we go. All right. Why is this? What? That's not right. All right. Okay. Um, we'll get this fixed here in just a second. Welcome, welcome. The weekend is over officially right now. Right now, I'm calling. I'm calling it end. The end to the weekend. Uh, we're going to go ahead and begin begin the this week uh, but first i have to shut this down and start it over again because it's it's not working it thinks it's still on the weekend we'll shut this one down too wait wait, wait. this is not burger king it's not we burger do not king. get to have it their way we do not no 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 we don't oh wow um let's see we have hang on hang on hold tight hold tight this is gonna work i'm gonna fix this all my buttons need to work all these buttons have to work i can do it here and i could do it there but i, have, I want to do it here <laughs> That's why I have the button machine, right? Why? <sighs> Launch GUI. Let's see. Let's see what's happening here. Where's the GUI? Let's see. Oops, that was the wrong button. The apocalypse may be upon us. Edit. Target IP. 4.21. Now I need to see what my IP address is. the target that's going to this one let's do a little tech support here it's a good thing i haven't handed out the internet yet because uh somebody would have to do all this for me oh it's 4.29 4.29 and it's saying 4.21 scratch all that oh that was terrible i apologize let's save that make the change does that fix it no i think i broke it further We are professionals here. Uh, let's let's do a little uh, live troubleshooting as we as we start off. Let me tell you, I had the best birthday weekend ever. As I'm as I'm working on this, let me just tell you uh, how my my weekend went. Saturday, Saturday, I uh, I had the the distinct pleasure of crawling under my house in the crawl space <laughs> um, with the intent to do plumbing, which I think should be a crime, um, at least for somebody of my skill level. Yeah. Uh, so I, I did crawl under, I, I had all the tools that you would expect to use when you're, when you're assembling plumbing. I had two saws, I had a sledgehammer and a rock pick. Um, I don't know why I had the rock pick. Um, and I had assorted plumbing parts. Um, my first time I crawled under, I crawled, I got halfway through the maze of wires and cables and, and lines and drains which it literally is. It's, it's like playing like Twister in 3D to try to crawl to to where I needed to get to. Because 115 years of, of various installations and nothing's ever been taken out. I uh, crawled under there and it was, uh, I got halfway to it and I realized that the part that I had just purchased from the store and brought was not going to work because I thought it was a three inch to a three inch line I was connecting, but it was a four inch to a three inch line. Changed everything. Changed everything for me. And it made it very, very difficult to assemble. <laughs> 
it took it took two and a half to three hours underneath the house to put it together. But um, when I crawled out at well, I don't know what it was nine thirty p.m. I was using a flashlight under the the batteries went dead. I'd been under so long. Um, when I crawled out about nine thirty p.m., we had a fully functional flushing toilet indoors. Indoors. Welcome to the current century. Yes, I have indoor plumbing again, which is which is awesome, and it doesn't leak, and it's perfect, and it's and, and you could send like a true professional plumber under the house, and no, I just have one. I just have one. The upstairs, it still looks like it, well, it looks worse than what I showed you before, um, but our downstairs bathroom is now replumbed because we had to take out that cast iron line and replace everything with PVC. Um, let me just tell you that doing this assembling plumbing. It's supposed to be done like from the ground up, you build it and eventually get up to the top and put the last piece on, which is often like the toilet flange or something like that. Uh, we already have the top pieces in place and the bottom piece in place. And so we're trying to assemble things and where you have to like slide them on the top and on the bottom. Uh, if anyone who's done this before knows it does not fit, it does not fit. But we somehow, I was able to flex using my muscles, three inch PVC pipe to bend it far enough and twist it and everything to get it on. All, all while using 10 second instant bond cement. Got it together. It's glued. It's, it's like up to code. It is, it is amazing. And sometimes I just go and just flush the toilet just because I can. It, you know, I don't need to. I just, I'm just glad I have one that works. All right. Uh, that being said, that means that my internet is not working. We're going to give away the internet here in a minute so somebody can fix this for me because let's see. Let's see, I am, oh, that's 4.21, I, should, I shouldn't have changed it, should have been 4.21 all along, 4.21, there we go, save, so the target goes here, this button goes here, that button goes there, I don't know why it isn't working. And all of this, all of this, the the struggle I'm having right now is just so that I I don't have to watch this. It's just so I don't have to do this. You ready? Right here. Okay, now that's not even working. This isn't even funny anymore. What is wrong with my? Uh... It's been a rough weekend apparently. Okay, upstream key four is chat five. Chat five is right here. Can I take it full screen? You guys, why didn't you tell me? My my connection's off the back. Everything's been working all along. Everything's been working all along, and it's just a little cable that I have to wiggle around the back end. So uh, we're going to get this fixed. Hang on one second. Bet that fixed it. Are you ready? We're gonna hit the button. Boom! Boom, there you go. I shouldn't have broken anything. I had to repair all that first and then just plug it in again. All because they turned that computer off. All right. Uh, good good Monday morning. Welcome, welcome everybody. I have to do a special welcome uh, for Sophia Starlin. Sophia, it, that almost was your problem this morning. Lucky it is Bird Pants Monday. Yes, it is. Sophia, you were first in chat this morning. First, to kick off the week, as a matter of fact, uh, we're going to go ahead and gift you with the internet. We call it a gift, but really it's a punishment for you breaking the law, breaking the silence of the morning, making us uh, realize that our day is yet underway again, and we have to begin everything we have to do in a regular day. Uh, so thanks for that, Sophia. And for that, we're going to send you with the internet. You can uh, download a copy of your permanent record by paying the 50 cent fee on our merchandise page, our shopping page online on YouTube. And you can download that form and fill in blank uh, to commemorate this win, if you want to call it that. But thank you, Sophia. Glad that you're here first. Appreciate you. All right. Uh, we, uh, I had, had my birthday on Sunday. It was great. I, I slept. Oh, my goodness. It was beautiful. I slept knowing that the plumbing was working indoors. And, and there's, there's not a better feeling. You don't know what you're missing until it's gone, really. And... Uh, I have gone my whole life 
minus a couple camping trips uh, with uh, with with not uh, <laughs> just got a text from a good friend I haven't talked to in years. Um, anyway, I got my whole life always just assuming the plumbing worked in the house, and uh, and then briefly it didn't, and so now now we're back to the working category. All right, let's turn this music off because it's time to sing happy birthday to. Uh, I guess me. I'm going to I'm going to claim today as well cuz my birthday was yesterday and it's actually closer to being my birthday than it was on Friday when we also claimed it. So, I'm going to claim rights to do that. We also going to sing to Victoria S, Lou James, Lisa, Daisy, Jude, oh my goodness. Um Annabelle, Mimi and C, Grandma Rose, Wiley Coyote, all celebrating their birthdays today. Wow. That's that's a lot of birthdays. How are we going to break this one up? Victoria Lou, Victoria Lou, Lisa, Daisy, and Jude, Annabelle, Mimi, Grandma Rose, Wiley Coyote, and me. How about that? Does that work? I'll, RA will be last if that works. All right, let's uh, let's get ready to sing. Uh, sing together. That is sing together. Um, in in one of the uh, the most well known songs uh, sung in 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 our country, and that is Happy Birthday. Um, it's right behind that Taylor Swift one, which we're not going to talk about. But uh, <laughs> it's the birthday song time, which means uh, if you are one of the dancers, please assemble, get in positions. Uh, I see everyone's in their leotards and their their little flowery things. Um, looks great, looks great. And new costumes today, they're wonderful. They turned out great. Um, we're going to do a little warm up for the singers, which is all of us. Ready? La 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 la. Okay, that's going to do it. Uh, excellent. Uh, remember, shoulders back. Bend your knees a little bit. We don't want anyone passing out during the song. Okay, but blend your voice with your neighbor, but still project to the back of the room because we have to sing together to everybody. <clears throat> Here we go. I had like a big glass of milk this morning. I'm not sure I can sing. <laughs> We're going to give it a try anyway. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, Victoria, Lou, Lisa, Daisy, and Jude. Happy birthday to you. Okay, so now we have to get Annabelle, Mimi, Grandma Rose, Wiley Cody, and me. It's gonna be a it's gonna be a tight fit. Let's see. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, Annabelle, Mimi, Grandma Rose, Wally Cody, and R.A. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to OG Sean White's 12-year-old Ben. Ben, happy birthday. We'll add that, add that on there as well. Cha-cha-cha. We've got the uh, do re mi fa so la ti do going on in the background. Lots lots of dancers. Wow, the dance, the dance team has really taken off. Happy birthday, Dylan and Courtney, Beth Mole. Lots, lots of birthdays uh, to everyone who's celebrating a birthday today, whether it's your birthday today or not, <laughs> like me. Uh, happy birthday! Thank you very much. Hopefully, you help yourself to free pancakes somewhere, and uh, and usually Denny's. Denny's is our, our place of choice. But uh, either way, uh, have, hope you have a wonderful day. There are a million places you could be, a million people you could spend your birthday with, and you've chosen to be here with us. That is wonderful. Thank you for that. Hopefully, we're making your day a little bit, a little, 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 little bit better. Uh, and that, and that's all I have to say on that matter. So my day is better because I have indoor plumbing. You know, what are you grateful for today? <laughs> it's the simple things, really, that make me happy. All right, happy birthday, everybody. Um, Remember, dancers, do a little stretching on the cool down. We don't want anyone to uh, be injured. So thank you, thank you, thank you. You guys are absolutely wonderful. Very merry on birthday to everyone else, says Tammy Dunlap. Appreciate it. Tammy, love the shirt, by the way. Um, all right, uh, what did you do for your birthday? Uh, Sundays are pretty much the same every time. Um, church and rest, that's that's pretty much all I do on Sundays. I take it, I take it very easy very easy so but that was it was a great day i got a fair amount of rest so it was good uh can we see your birthday present hall uh birthday present hall is currently underneath the house assembled in the form of plumbing uh that's where we spend the birthday present on it was uh let's see this this whole uh the leaky toilet seal 
project I was kicked back has gone days. from uh, a quick, oh, we probably just need to replace the wax seal under the toilet to um, to one of the largest projects we've done on our house in the last three years. Um, so it's that that's that's the birthday, and I'm and I'm happy with that. It's going to be wonderful when it's done. It's going to be great. Do you eat any cakes, Jasmine? Yes, my uh, daughter and my wife combined their their cooking, their culinary skills, and they made a uh, it was a German chocolate cake, but it wasn't with the German chocolate the typical frosting because I'm not a big fan of coconut. Um, so we did a German chocolate for the the cake, and and then we had chocolate frosting. Um, so. The yellow cake, we didn't know yellow cake. We had the option of white or chocolate, and I did chocolate on chocolate. And, of course, I had it in a bowl with milk, which is the only way to eat cake. And I actually had a one of the leftover pieces of cake because, yes, there were leftover. Um, uh, I had one of the leftover pieces for, pieces for breakfast, so if I have a little bit of a sugar crash here in a little bit, that will be why. All right, uh, we are... Whew, milk is bad. Nosy rosy. Nosy rosy. Uh, I, uh, I'm part cow, I guess. I don't know. I, I love milk. All right. I had a great birthday. I really did. Um, and got plans for this afternoon because we're, we don't have court today. That's, that's the big news. I forgot to tell you, we don't have court in our trial today. And because of that, we're going to do a recap of what happened on Friday. And no, we're not going to watch the whole thing. I don't think we're going to watch any of it because, because really it was, it was one of the most painful openings I've ever watched just because they were both so verbose there there was everything was in there it's I mean we had six hours of opening statements it seemed like and it just it just dragged on um, so we're gonna crunch that down to the the cliff notes abbreviated version which I might be able to get into one breath I mean it's really we can really you know take everything they said and condense it down quite a bit um, and, and that way, if you missed Friday, you definitely, I would, I would say that would be a tough one to go back and watch on your own without, with all of us here to help you through it. Um, but it was, defense was easier to listen to, uh, Jamie, you're absolutely right. But still both were long, both were very long pickle flavored milk. No, but I did get an extra, a bag of pickled flavored cashews, which, which are really delicious. They're not, they're not, the pickle flavor is not super strong. So you still get a lot of the cashew flavor. Uh, but they're they're really good. They're really really good. Good snack. Um, let's see. I still have to go to the post office as well, so I apologize. I know somebody has something there because there's a there's a thing saying there's a package and I couldn't fit it in the in the post office box, so I have to wait till they're open. But we'll hopefully do that this afternoon. We're going to court hop a little bit. We are going to court hop. Um, but uh, let me first take you uh, back to last week and let's talk a little bit about this trial because uh, I, I think I think this trial is fascinating. I think it's going to be, I think it's a sleeper is what I'm saying. I think it's one that's going to get spicy. I think it's going to be quite interesting as things develop. And uh, mostly it's because the the two sides are very, are very different on this. I mean, it's instead of, Instead of having um, one guy saying, "Oh, I'm not guilty," or it was self-defense, which you normally have in a in a shooting where you know situation, it's like, "Oh, it was self-defense," or it was provoked, or you know, ex- accidental. He's actually saying it wasn't me; uh, it was somebody else. And so let's let's tear back to the very beginning. Let me back up just a little bit. So the state goes first in any of any of these. Um, situations they have the burden of proof and they get up and they start explaining this story and they say that george kelly or george allen kelly everyone calls him allen um that mr kelly was uh at his ranch and and that he saw um some trespassers some um mexican nationals that were on his property either going back to mexico or coming from mexico and pat strickland did i miss your birthday pat i am so sorry happy happy birthday brett uh, I'm sorry, I'm just trained. I said brat, but I said meant Pat. Um, happy birthday, Pat. I'm sorry for that too. Uh, happy birthday. I hope you have a, a wonderful one. Uh, that being said, uh, you know, have a, have a spare piece of cake. I've got one left over for you. My birthday's today. I'm coming in, <laughs> coming in late. It's all right. It's all right, Pat. Uh, you're here. And we'll, we'll do a little bit of, um, happy birthday, Pat appreciate it. I can't sing again. I can't sing again because I just don't have it in me. But this, uh, 
there, there is another case happening with a stabbing today, but we don't want to start another case in the middle of this one. This one that we're on is going to be um, pretty lengthy. It's going to go two and a half, maybe maybe in three weeks, unless unless something drastic happens. But uh, whole milk, yes, of course, whole milk. Uh, unpasteurized if you can get it. Um, anyway, we've got... Uh, the, the state gets up and they say, Mr. Kelly was at his property and he saw these these Mexican nationals who are either going to Mexico or coming from Mexico through his property, which is right there by the border, about a mile away. And and he said, uh, and, and they say that he, he fired at them and shot and killed Gabriel. I, I can't pronounce Gabriel's last name. I do apologize for that. Um, it's, uh, let's see, Gabriel Kuen Butima. Bitima, I, I can't, I don't know how it's, how to say it, but uh, we're, we're going to call him Gabriel here. Uh, they, they claimed that it was intentional, that he was sort of like vigilante, rancher, sick of people trespassing, trespassing on his land. And, and he, and he shot this guy at 115 yards away, unprovoked. Uh, the, there's no, there's no question that he was, he was shot. I mean, Gabriel was found dead on the property, about 115 yards away from the house. Uh, but the, the angle of the shot was, was basically um, through the side and out the front, so through the chest area. Um, it was fatal. Uh, he fell right, right there, uh, according to the, the evidence on the scene, and, and the other people who were with him left. Whether it was one person or multiple people, that's disputed. So. They were from Guatemala, headed headed to Mexico. Phil, thank you for the correction on that. I, I stand corrected. Um, what time does the trial start? This one I'm interested in. It started on Friday, Jules, uh, but they do, they take every Monday off. So we're just doing a recap today. We'll be back tomorrow morning. Uh, they're going to start 8.30 their time, which I think is 12.30 Eastern time. It's a late start because it's in Arizona. And this time of year, Arizona, because they don't do daylight savings, is on Pacific time. So it's a very late trial. Uh, where is this trial? It's Nogales, Santa Cruz County. Michaela, it's in Santa Cruz County. Um, ja- Jasmine, it's still it's still early for me to to weigh in on where I stand on this. I realize it's got some sensitive issues, but I've but going through the, the openings, uh, the state's basically saying it was murder. It was intentional. He shot the guy, killed him. That's why we arrested him, and you know we should throw the book at him. Uh, and on the defense side, they turn around. And they say, hang on, not so fast. Yes, he did have a AK-47. Yes, he had a Glock. Yes, he fired rounds when there were people on his property, but he says he fired them in the air, nine shots out of his back patio. And if you were standing at the back patio and looking across to that that place, it would be a, this, what the defense says is a very difficult shot to make from where the, the state is going to say that he was standing. Um, possible. It's very possible with that firearm that it has that range. 115 yards is not is not un, unheard of for that. But uh, but he's saying no, that's not what happened. Mr. Kelly says what happened was I was in my house, and I either saw motion and stepped outside and heard a gunshot, or I was in my house and I heard a gunshot and stepped outside. His wife did not hear the gunshot, but he did. Um, but that's that's not uncommon. I I often will hear. You know, hear things being like that was a gunshot, and people be like, "What was that?" And uh, your ears are sort of tuned to it. But uh, but he steps outside and he sees people on his land, and he fires. According to him, nine rounds sort of up in the air, bum, 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 and it scares them off, and they run off. And he calls the border patrol and says, "Hey, you've got people on my land. You know, they've got guns, whatever." There, um, and uh, and so he, the border patrol comes out. They they check out the area. Nothing. They leave. Later in the day, he's out with his dogs, moving his horse from one pasture to another, and his dogs find the body of Gabriel. And at that time, Rigor Mortis had set in. He calls the police one more time. The police come out. He's got a light on it because it's dark by the time the police get there. he they, they come out and they check out the scene, and they arrest him and charge him with murder. So this is, a, this is an interesting case because if the defense can prove what they have, uh, the issues that they've raised in their opening – it, it leaves a lot of room for reasonable doubt. It doesn't mean that, that this did not happen the way the state said it, but there, it leaves a lot of room for reasonable doubt because what happened on the state side in the investigation seems a little fishy. It seems like, uh, I mean, it's not to the level of like Karen Reed fishy on the investigation, but 
but you know, borderline. It's it seems like the state went with they're okay with using witnesses that really aren't that credible or reliable. And the state doesn't have a bullet match. They don't even have the bullet that, that killed the individual. So trying to say it was from that same gun is going to be very difficult to prove. Uh, they, they think that they know the angle he was standing out and how he fell. And so he would have been standing sort of it, the bullet would have come from the house direction. If, if everything, if he stood, if he didn't turn, if, I mean, there's, there's so many things that could have happened. Um, it set him up to take his property. American dreamer. I, I don't think so. Cause it would, the property would go to his wife, but, um, Here's, here's what you need to know. Mr. Kelly has lived on that property for 23 years without a problem. Okay. This isn't like, uh, you know, allegations that he's been shooting at people before or, or anything like that. It's 23 years living on the border on this ranch property with no incidents. And then all of a sudden he gets mad and shoots one, a, a trespasser. I, th that seems, that seems like a strange story. Uh, Michaela, why did they not do court on Mondays? Uh, sometimes courts uh, like this will have um, a dedicated day that they take care of docket issues. And, and so they're, they might not have as many judges available. So they just have to take care of docket issues so that they don't get far behind on other cases when there's a big trial as well. Um, sometimes they you know, have the buildings used for something else or something. Um, don't forget, he called the victim an animal. That's a bell the fence can't enter ring. They, yes, Angela, I agree. But I, I, like I said, once I listened to the entire, entire thing, and I heard the defense's story, that this is probably the, the best argument that the state has against him is the, his weird behavior. And I'll say it's weird uh, when he called 911 or when 911 called him in this case. Uh, the, the strange terminology, the caginess to which he answered questions, which he said, hey, what's, what's going on? And he would, really wouldn't come out with it. Uh, defense says that was because he was out there at the scene at the time and he was afraid people were around him because it was dark. He was there with a the flashlight and he was afraid people were hearing him talk about it and he and he didn't want them to hear him and, and put him in danger, which is a bit of a stretch. Um, but saying, you know, you, you guys have played that game where it's like 20 questions and you're like, I'm thinking of something. You ask questions, you're like, is it animal, mineral, or vegetable? And it's like, oh, it's a mineral. Uh, that would be easy. Uh, he used that same animal, mineral, or vegetable, uh, you know, to describe the body, saying, "Well, it's not a mineral and it's not a vegetable, so it's an animal." And that was that was weird. It's it it, it feels like it when I first heard it. It felt like it was like a like something that would be racist, but the way I heard it described. And, and knowing that familiarity with that animal, mineral, and vegetable uh, little questionnaire thing is strange. It's, it's just really weird. You think, okay, it could be a, the cartel did this on his land. He might, might have been shot for something he did or, or made them mad. If so, why would they leave the radio? Why would they leave his cell phone? It's, yeah, it's just uh, defense implied he was killed by someone from Mexico who was crossing as well. Like he was a traitor of some sort and they used the illegal crossing for cover. Uh, we're not going to do the thumbnail on this one. I've I've made the the image already for this one. We're not going to do a thumbnail on this one. It's it's a, it's lots of sensitive issues that uh, that'll get it might get a little sketchy to do that. But we'll we'll do a thumbnail on another one. Anyway, there's there's a lot to think about here. There's a lot that's weird, and I'm I'm coming at this with an open mind, as as we should. I believe you know they did a very good job of of describing that currently Mr. Kelly is innocent. He has that cloak of of innocence or invisibility, right? And and the state needs to prove it otherwise. And when you look at that, the evidence they have, they don't have the bullet that says it came from his gun. That would have been huge if they have the bullet that came from his gun. You know, case closed, right? But uh, they don't have that. They they don't even have any caliber bullet. There's there's even they went through with metal detectors. I think two people at least went through with metal detectors trying to find the bullet and were not able to find it. Um, so they ha they have these calls and the calls to that were recorded, the interactions that were a little strange, a little different, a little cagey, um, hesitant, and 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 that's going to be that's going to be the best of what they have. 
I'm confused why they can't recover the bullet. Uh, Lenovo, the, uh, the country down there, the desert down there is just wide open and huge. And it's, I mean, it's not, it, you, there are parts that are rugged, but it's just, it's desert and brush and sagebrush. And where there is sagebrush, uh, sagebrush is not like a wheat. It's not like a weed you can just push aside. It has a very thick stalk. Um, you've got cactuses, you've got, you know, things that the bullet might be embedded somewhere in one of these plants. And unless you pass the metal detector within a couple inches of that bullet, it's not going to find, uh, it's not going to get a signal from there. So I do believe there's something not adding up. The, the, the big thing for me, if, if the defense is right, the, the fact that all these witnesses appeared trying to testify against Mr. Kelly and several of them just got all the facts wrong. Like it was obvious they didn't know what had happened and, and then the, the last witness that they went with um, made a lot of mistakes in the testimony that were allegedly covered up or corrected by the police department during translation, which, is, which sounds really sketchy. But, yeah, anyway, there's a, there's a ton of that. I'm not going to replay the call. They're going to replay that a lot during court. And, and it's, we're, we're just going to do a quick, a quick synopsis today. I agree, Jules. You don't describe a human being that way. Um, but, but, but I have to also look at this and say um, that that he was seventy three years old. Okay, he he is seventy three years old, and I I have some friends that are that are older, um, old, you know, older than seventy three. And they use terminology that that I don't use, and it's not that um, it, it was just it was it was okay in their day to it, well, it was it was normal in their day. I wouldn't say it's okay, but it was normal in their day to use terminology that that is not okay now. And it seems that some people haven't learned that, and so the terminology they use um, growing up or that was normalized in in their time just it doesn't fit in now. And so I have to wonder if maybe that's part of, of what he was, of what's happening here. Anyway, the fact that he wanted to talk to one particular officer was sus. That, that the defense explained to me, Misty, uh, to my satisfaction, that issue. And that was that he was talking to the liaison. And he has, he has a dedicated liaison assigned to his ranch by the Border Patrol uh, to handle these issues. And so when he, when he called and asked for that person, um, that, that made sense there. Let's see. Just to clarify, I'm not defending Mr. Kelly as though I think he's innocent. I think it sounds like he's the main suspect, but there's still that room for doubt, especially since he said he heard a shot. Lenova, I agree. I want to. I want to hear more. I. I would. I'd be interested to go down and metal detect down there. I. I would love to. I mean, it's probably never going to happen, but. Uh, being able to go out there and metal detect in an area like that, it's probably going to be a lot of a lot of garbage stuff. But um, the problem is if an amateur goes down and metal detects in that area and they find something, like they get a target and they dig it up, uh, they've it's lost the the orientation, the location, the evidence, the ground, the path, the travel path. You lose a lot of that. So, yeah, it needs to be the police that find it. Okay, um, let's see. What else? We were going to do some court hopping this morning. Could be a dangerous place. Yeah, I've, I've never been there. I've never been down that far in... Uh, I've been to Phoenix. That's about it. Okay, let's, uh, let's go ahead and see if we can jump in on some court so we can get some court time this morning because I think that would be wonderful. Let's see. Judge Middleton was up just a little bit ago. Let's see if he's still... He's, uh, he's on a buoy break right now. Might be back. I'll keep him on the back burner. Let's see who else is up. Sup five in Elkhart. Oh, that's that's not live anymore. 
There should be a, a hearing in Brian Koberger coming up, I think, in in less than a, in just a couple of weeks, really. Um, that Brian Koberger he- hearing is, is upcoming, and that one is supposed to be uh, quite interesting because the judge has said we need to have more information about exactly what your alibi is because he's his his defense is i have an alibi hang on we're trying to get this working the voicemail press two hey this is scott how are you doing hey uh scott it's angela hey angela hello yeah, hey, sorry. I just, uh, it's a quick one. I know we are waiting for the judge. Uh, I just wanted to uh, clear up something. Uh, well, maybe explain something, actually. Um, regarding the 911 calling the, uh, uh, Mr. Allen, uh, I, I said the other day that I almost got a job as a dispatcher last summer, uh, and it wasn't really a 911 it was more like a non-emergency dispatcher which means people that have non-emergency call me and sometimes i call them calls back in uh, if there is a need to call back so i don't know how it works in us there might be something similar uh, like emergency and non-emergency where 911 or whatever it's called call back to people that needs to be called back you know yeah so it so that's, you think that's what the person was that called him? Like a non-emergency? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I mean, that could be an explanation because I guess there is a, like, I think you guys have an emergency number, which is number one and non-emergency, which is, I don't know which one is that, but I guess you have that. Yeah, our, our non-emergency line is different for every police area, for every county. Um, typically, you have a full phone number, like like the burner phone is you know eight zero one five one three eleven sixty. You would have a number like that just for non emergency, but it would be different per county or per police department. Um, and then nine one one is 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 sort of a universal as far as the U S goes um, number that can be used that will route your call to the closest to the appropriate uh, emergency call center. Yeah. Uh, so that's what I, I mean, that's the only explanation I can think, uh, that's why he got a call back. Uh, because I, as I said, I almost got a job as a dispatcher at something like that last year. And Lenova did say, yes, Lenova, you was right. Um, uh, uh, it's if you hear a shot or if you witness something, or if you have to report a crime that is non-emergency crime. Yeah. Uh, so yeah. yeah. Um, uh, and that was everything uh, I wanted to say. Uh, I am going to send you um, a link on Burner Phone, uh, which uh, I hope you like it. It's something completely different. Uh, it's about a video from uh, a daycare here in, actually not here in Sweden, but in Denmark. But it's a similar, uh, we do a similar thing in Sweden too. It's a really fun video what uh, kids do when it's rainy day. And you might even, uh, it's a public account, so you can even share with others. Okay. So it's, I'll watch for it. Thank you. Thank you, Angela. It's good to talk yeah, to you this uh, morning. And one, yeah. Yes. Uh, and happy birthday again. Uh, thank you. Yes. Thank so, you. Th- thank you. Bye-bye. All right. We'll see you. Bye. Bye-bye. That's awesome. Uh, I need to, to do a couple shout outs really quickly. Uh, Gerda K, thank you for all you do. Thank you for the five months of support, Gerda. Tisha S says, I'm almost, almost yellow. One more month. Happy birthday, Scott. And my son, Jude. Happy birthday, Jude. Uh, Peep says, I think he was trying to refer to him as a coyote. Uh, that's talking about the animal thing. That That's a possibility. And that's definitely what the state made it sound like. Um, and obviously, the defense is trying to spin that in a different light. I would say the defense's spin on that is is not um, is not as convincing. The, st- the state sounds very convincing. It's a plausible explanation for why he used that terminology. And the defense is a strange sort of far-fetched um, thing. And, but, but one thing I've come across in this, in this case particularly is that the, the terms that are being tossed around, the words that are being used are, are words that people assign different meanings to. Like we don't all listen to hear the same thing and, and think, oh, that's what, it, that's what it is. We all hear the same word, but we have different meanings to it. Um, for example, the word alien, um, where they talk about illegal aliens. 
Um, I growing up as a kid, I used to say my mom's an alien. Um, not that she was from Mars, but she was not a U.S. citizen. She was from another country, and 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 that was the terminology. The legal alien, the resident, um, the resident card that you're allowed to have, you know, have that was the terminology that's that's used in a, under the Oxford Dictionary. That is the the correct word to be used. But but lately, um, some of the terms have been the definitions in you know socially have changed, and so now there's there's like a there's a different uh, different explanation. Anyway, so we're going to run into some of that today, and we're going to try to use correct terminology, um, and. Uh, instead of instead of I, I I can't I can't adapt to to every new twist in in what words mean. So we're going to go with like Oxford defi- Oxford um, definition uh, from Norway, yes Norwegian. Um, but but anyway, we're gonna we're gonna do that. Let's see. Hi from Perth, Australia, and chat Andrew. Thank you very much. Same here. My mom was from Perth, and we use that terminology. Yeah, we're. I would. I would say that. Uh, that to the, my best, my best efforts. I'm going to try to be respectful to all the sides, and I don't intend to use any word that might be offensive. Um, but at the same time, if if the actual term, like the dictionary definition term, is um, is offensive, I can't. I can't help that. I can't help that part. But we are going to try to be polite and respectful to everybody on this because, really, somebody lost their life. And, and somebody's, you know, in, in court with the possibility of facing the rest of their life in, in jail. The, the sentence is actually maximum, I think, 20 years. Uh, but when you're 73 years old, uh, that's basically the rest of your life. So, um, In through the outdoor, when metal detecting, you may come upon a murder weapon. I, I found one gun, um, but that was actually when I was out deer hunting. Um, and it's, it's a funny situation. I was, uh, I had lost, or actually my friend, uh, uh, who's normally on here, he, he's he actually, he's been in, in, in chat quite a bit, but uh, my friend Bob, we, I had one radio and he had my other radio and we were talking back and forth, you know, out deer hunting. And of course, we never see any deer when we're deer hunting. It's just a chance to be outside. And he uh, goes down one side, I go down somewhere else and he dropped my radio somewhere and we didn't find, realize it was gone until, until we met back up again. And, uh, and then he, well, he felt so bad. I'm like, look, it was a cheap radio. It was only worth like $15, $20, uh, just leave it. And, and he felt bad. He said, well, we can look for it. And he said, I think it would be over there. And I said, well, I would, I think it was over here. And so we both went to where we thought it would have been on where he'd, he'd gone. And he, and I went to where I was, where I thought it was. And it was down a little ledge that I'd seen him go down. And I thought it would have dropped off his belt right then. So I jumped down off that ledge and I, there were leaves and I pushed the leaves away and, and reached in. I grabbed the handle of a gun, a little, a little revolver. I pulled it out. I'm like, wow, you know, there's a revolver sitting here. Then I brushed leaves away again and there was my radio right next to it. So I found that, but, but that's it. Okay. Uh, Misty Beard, thank you very much. I, I appreciate that. I appreciate uh, and. I'm, I'm trying to be mindful of the fact that, that other people most likely are not trying to be offensive as well. So let's give everybody a little space if they use a term that, um, that might not be the, the best term to use or might be something that's not um, socially acceptable now. Um, let's, let's give them the benefit of the doubt on that as well. All right. Um, if you ever watch those dudes magnet fishing off the side of bridges with large magnet, they pull up sketchy stuff all the time. Yes, I've done that a little myself. We've got one court we can jump to right now. Let me let me pull this up. Okay, we've we've been here before. You have a notice for today, Mr. Edwards. Okay, you may be in the wrong court, Mr. Edwards, but let me get. Let, we've had this uh, lawyer, and we're gonna we're gonna figure that out. Mr. McDaniel, that's it as far as what I have on this appearance list. Anything else from the public defender's office? Oh, he's done. Uh, would they have a trial today? We do have a jury selection this morning. Yes, sir. Will the jury, the jury selection be put on um, you, on YouTube? Unless there's a, a minor involved or some reason not to, then yes. Okay. I'm just going to try to watch it. So, or go up there to the house and watch it. Thank you, sir. All right. Thank you, Mr. McDaniel. Corporal, anything else from the jail? No, sir. That's everything. All right. Thank you, Corporal. Ms. Bremer, anything else on the first appearance list from the state? No, Your Honor. All right. Thank you. 
Mr. Edwards, let's see. So they're going to have a jury selection uh, on. Ladies and gentlemen, that concludes first appearances. As uh, Mr. McDaniel mentioned, we do have a misdemeanor jury trial, and we'll put that on Zoom and YouTube uh, short- shortly. And they just cut it off. So that's pretty cool. Let's see. That, that court was um, 14th Judicial Circuit Court, Judge Wade Mercer. So we'll watch back for that one. I think Judge Boyd is live now, right? Let's see. This one is not her. I mean, that's her, but it's not her live channel. Go to channel. There she is. Astro. She's calling roll. Everyone, pay attention. Be quiet. Meyer, 130. Roll. Mark Anthony Acosta. Mark Anthony, sorry, Costa. Mark Anthony Costa. In custody, we have Jesus Prado. There's going to be a Andrew announcement from, from Becky Hill. Samuel Espinoza. Thank you. Brian Maldonado Arita. Brian Maldonado Arita. Juan Rios. Thank you. In custody, we have Justin Sumi. Monroe. Thank you. Monroe Hurd. Robert Castillo. Thank you. Samuel Bach, thank you. Sebastian Delgado, Sebastian Delgado. Ernest Mora. I am present, unless setting you uh, indicated that he could appear on Zoom this morning, he is on Zoom. Yes, all right, thank you. Miguel Ramos, thank you. Jovan Amor, custody, Juan Jose Flores. Did I just call that? Juan Jose Flores. Eric Cantu. Thank you. Michael Rosas. They should be back in the store now. Are they not working? Andrew Orozco, custody. Michael Campos, custody. David Keller. David Henry Keller. David Machi or Machi, David Machi or David Machi, Diego Morasco, Mascaro, custody, Arceli Garcia, Arceli Garcia. We've got one hour before the All Becky right. thing. Anyone whose name was not called or you came in late. All right. These are the rules of the court. Everybody listen to these rules carefully. They're the same rules I always give. They never change, but people don't follow them. So it's Monday, a day of new beginnings. So we're going to follow these rules. To my left is the court reporter. Do not place your paperwork on her desk. Do not stand around her. Do not talk around her while we're on the record. How do you know we're on the record? Because I will have called the style of the case. If you touch your equipment and damage it, write a check for $10,000. Perfectly certified. <laughs> In front of me right here is criminal trial division. Their files are right there. Just grab your file, place it on their desk, have a seat. They're going to call you in the order of appearance. Here is family violence. Again, just grab their file, place it on their desk, have a seat. They're going to call you in the order of appearance. Behind uh, the prosecutors for family violence is the probation officer. Vashon, can you raise your hand? Do not. Gather around her. Do not turn your back to her. Do not put your papers on her desk. That is her office. It's an office without walls, but treat it as such. This door right here, attorneys, you know that's where inmates come from. Do not block the officer's line of vision. If something happens and they have to run you over, I will do an affidavit saying that you were warned. Do not approach the bench unless you have cons conferred with the state and conferred with your client. If your client is in custody, yes, they need to be brought out here. Do not approach the court coordinator asking for resets, continuances to be excused. I'm the only person who can do that. Once you have conferred with the state, once you have conferred with your client, walk to this desk over here, ask them to place your file here. I will call you in order of appearance. 
The only exception is if your client needs an interpreter, and that is because there are so few interpreters, we try to get them in and out. Does your client need an interpreter? If your client wishes to speak to a court, to the court in a language other than English, you need to have the interpreter call down. Once you request your client, if your client is an inmate, do not leave the courtroom because for security reasons, the deputies can have only so many per persons in the box. Today is Monday, it's a short week. So what does that mean? Either Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, or Thursday is gonna, come a second, gonna become Friday. So we're gonna be kind to each other. We're gonna smile even if we don't meet it. And we're gonna confer nicely. All right, everyone, please confer. All right. Sean, I went to go see Ghostbusters. <laughs> That's an hour and 20 minutes because, you know, I'm in the uh, fall of my life. I can't get that. back. That's an hour and 20 minutes. I can't get back. At some point, you should stop. You should stop like alien. That's I think they should stop. Bite. But am I going to go see it? Yeah, because I need to see how it ends. That's an hour and 20 minutes. I can't Beetle get back. Juice. Do, do we need another beetle juice? Absolutely not. But am I going to see it? Yes, because I need to see how it ends. It was you that started the online petition to get a new uh, roadhouse, right? <laughs> Absolutely not. I, that, I don't need to see the end of it. Friday's Good Friday. I think we have court in Arizona, though. We'll, we'll have to check and see. It might be a very short week with just three days of court this week. Judge Boyd has a nice purse. I haven't seen that one before. Uh, if someone, uh, if, I, if someone's able to grab a, uh, a little Google picture of that, and let me know which one it is. That would be great. We'd like to know which uh, which designer she's uh, representing today. And she's got the two vases of flowers. Looks like she got a fresh delivery. <laughs> We'll give her just a minute to get everything there. Everyone's getting set, right? People are conferring. They're talking to their clients. They're putting the, the folders on the desk so that people can can work on it. And once once the the folders work their way up to the judge, she's going to start calling cases. But she is also, if you look right now, the reflection in her glasses, I've zoomed in. She's working. She's not just like surfing the web and be like, hey, what's up on, on YouTube? But she's she's actually looking at documents, reading reading some things that are coming up in, in some of the, the upcoming cases. Uh, and maybe sometimes doing some paperwork that can be done um, without without an appearance before the judge. Good morning. If the judge uses the rent the runway for her purses. Rent the runway. You can like rent high end stuff. Just like a, a daily purse delivery, new one every day. That's pretty cool. Let's see, I can't see if that's the same vase. I don't know what she does with all her vases because she gets probably a billion vases. Rent vase. <laughs> Haven't you heard there's a company that you can rent Jordan sneakers? See what I'm I'm picky about my shoes. Yes. I get a pair and I wear them until they're they're pretty much worn through and then I get a new pair. But they they get very comfortable. I don't think I could put on a new pair of shoes every day. I think there have been a couple um, showings of purses, repeat showings. I'm not sure if she has a favorite. She must have a whole house just for her purses. Give the vases back to the florist. I'm wondering if there's like some sort of... Uh, Vases for charity that she supports, you know, maybe like a, a charity out there that sells used vases on eBay and uses the money for you know, 
helping people uh, get back on their feet after the prison stint. Lace up black vans. Once you've got something that works, Steve, why change, right? Love the Pink Floyd and the uh, the profile pic as well. Let's see. Eddie Martin, 250 miles. Just a few short hours, four or so, right? Depending on the speed limit. Drive safe, man. Derek Reyes. I think my son's going to start sawing on the wall upstairs in just a minute. It might get really loud. We'll see. We are. Good morning. Is he related to his lawyer? Do you think? It's just the glasses style that's like exactly the same. All right. So uh, you're asking for a continuance? Yes, sir. All right. We're going to go on the record. Court is calling 2023 CR 2568 State of Texas versus Derek Reyes. Can I have parties announced for the record for the state? Daniel Escobar for the state of Texas. Defense. But Luis Martinez on behalf of Mr. Reyes. And are you Mr. Reyes? Yes, Your Honor. Not father, All right. son. Here we are Martinez. here for a sentencing, and you filed a motion for continuance? I did, Judge. All right. What's the purpose for the motion for continuance? Judge, um, prior to sentencing, the, this is a, you know, obviously an intoxication manslaughter case. Um, there's a wrongful death case going on against the bar that was involved in this incident. Prior to that, the plaintiff's attorney reached out to me to figure out if they could depose Mr. Reyes because he's essential to their case against the, the bars. Um, we had been going back and forth, agree that once we did sentencing, we'd be happy to be deposed. Um, he went ahead and entered into a plea bargain. Um, unfortunately, the plaintiff's attorney who's handling the case at, at Mr. Henry's office is moving to another firm. <laughs> so that's caused a hold up. Um, I do have a three-way uh, email string, uh, string between me and the defense attorney and the plaintiff's attorney, and we've got some dates. I'm available for all those dates. Um, we're just waiting for the okay on which one of those will be. All right, this has been going on since January. They're going to have to just depose him at the prison. Judge, I, you know how difficult that would be. And this, this of course, does help the, the, the complainant's um, family. Um, this is at their request. They're the ones that reached out to me. Uh, we haven't had any issues with Mr. Reyes when he's on bond. Um, I'm just asking that we, you know, we continue him for a, a couple more weeks um, to allow this to happen. We've got uh, the dates that we have available are mentioned in the continuance. I'm available on all those dates. It'll take an afternoon. And after that, we'll be in a position to get this done. So. Judge, part of the plea bargain agreement was that he would cooperate with the uh, ongoing cases against the bar. Um, I do understand that uh, he is needed. So I think that it would be a good idea just to let him have the time just to get the pose. What's the specific date that he's going to be disposed on? None of these proposed dates. What's the specific date? I just need the plaintiff's attorney to tell me which day. I mean, I'm, I'm available the 15th. I'm available the 16th. All right. So you, before I make a ruling, you all need to get that from the complainant's attorney. What date? Yes, ma'am. I'll, so, I'll reach out to the plaintiff's attorney right now. All right. So have a seat. We'll come back. She's playing hardball. Both the uh, the prosecutor and defense are asking to have the sentencing moved out. It's just sentencing. It's, Samuel Bach. I, I bet he's already pled guilty or was found guilty in court. And it sounds like Good it's morning, intoxicated manslaughter. Good morning. All right, State, did you tender an offer? Uh, yes, Your Honor. How old are you? 20. 20? Yes, ma'am. All right, Ms. Ferguson, set this in three weeks for plea deadline date. Dressed appropriately for court. Hands out of pockets. Respectful. Samantha, thank you very much, by the way. <laughs> amazing. One of our amazing mods. Thank you, thank you. 14 months. 
All right, you're coming back on April 18th. At that time, you need to let the court know whether or not you're accepting the state's offer. You understand? Yes, Your Honor. All right, thanks for dressing appropriately for court. Once you sign the reset form, you're excused. Thank you, Your Honor. You're welcome. Very respectful. Slacks, belt, polo shirt, no logos. I see attorneys just sitting here. Court is recessing at noon. Do not rush the court at 1145. Why is it when I ever I make that announcement, then people start. Yeah. Because you don't mean it. <laughs> yeah, I do. We're oh yes. Don't and don't the test words her. of my grandmother don't test me. Don't test her. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yeah, but you know, the problem is we got to get a five day work week and a four day work week. So we'll see how it goes. <laughs> Red Ford, good luck. Sounds awesome. I think it, I, I didn't catch the initial one. It sounds like you've got a, an interview coming up. So I missed the first comment. I like that I think a little bit like her. I think that's great. I think that's that that bodes well for me. She's she's a great a great judge. Let's move with the purpose. I think I think what's happening here is uh everyone's waiting for a case to go where she's really happy and they want to go right after that. Nobody wants to be the first person to see what kind of Monday is it for the judge. Morning, right. Judge. Good morning. Yeah, I did that side down. Judge, uh, we're here. I for... always dress this appropriately for court. I appreciate Look that. At this. Yes. This is this is Styles. Flat. Yeah. All right, um, so we're scheduled for a jury trial. We're scheduled to set a date for a yes. Jury trial. Okay, yes. so what date? We talked about a judge where we're looking at May seventh, Tuesday, right. May seventh. May seventh. Yes, Judge. All right, your jury trial date is going to be May 7th. Good Ford, good luck. If, if you want the job, I hope you get it. All right, we'll see you back on May 7th for jury trial. Are there any uh, pre-trial motions or anything that the court needs to hear? No, Judge. All right, let me make sure I have the discovery acknowledgement. And which case are you all proceeding on? It is. is it the 2022 case? Are there multiple ones? <laughs> <laughs> I think it's the 2022. Yes, yes. All right. So if you all can make sure, because uh, I do have the acknowledgement for discovery in that case, but in the other case, I don't have an acknowledgement for discovery. I know you all are not going on that case. But if y'all could get an acknowledgement of discovery on that one as well. No problem, Judge. Judge. Yeah. All right, thank you. Good you, Your Honor. You were, all right, you too. Thank you. you uh, reset form, then you're excused. Are we going to cover, cover Chad uh, Daybell? Uh, we're trying to cover the. Uh, yeah. I don't know. It, it depends on the, the dates. This The trial we're covering right now is going to go for about three weeks. Um, and Deputy Mejia, who's got Robert the one who supposed pains? to be starting here soon. So. All right. Uh, could you pull that file, uh, Marco? Yeah. Thank you. They'll start April 1st. Oh, okay. That's All right. Who's the attorney on Diego Mascaro? I am, Your Honor, Sharon Thorne. Hi. Well, we can't hear your motion to withdraw because he is having chest pains. I was just advised of that. Okay. So we'll recall it. Okay. Uh, I initially said on April 2nd, so I don't know. Okay. Was... All right. Well, we'll keep it for April 2nd. Thank you, Ron. Maybe excuse you. Yes. Okay. Motion to withdraw.
it's a it's a tough case. I know it's it's really high profile, and most people have heard the details already once as, through Lori Vallow. Eric Cantu. Okay. Good morning. You want Mr. Cantu to come up, Judge? Oh yeah. No, Zerosi. I think they're at the post office right now. I I have to go get them. All right. We have evading and evading. Two evading cases, that's it? Yes, Judge, but I mean, understanding, Mr. Powers. I've just actually, you might be good for this. Uh, I've just been informed that the state is filing a motion to recuse their office yeah. yes. from being able to try the case, Judge. So I'm assuming that will need to be set for a hearing. Well, I mean, are you uh, going to office. object? Is this that much to recuse? Judge, if, you're, if you will, this is the first time we've heard about this is today. So I would at least like to speak it over with the family and the, my client and try to discuss whether or not we will. There is a good chance that we will not object to it, but I'd like to at least go through it with them. All right. Ms. Ferguson, set this in 30 days on a motion to recuse. I will be in a murder trial in Dimmit from April 15th to the end of the month. Oh. He said he's going to be in trial from 18th, April 15th to the end of the month. So set it for April 11th. Evading and evading. Yes. This guy does not feel comfortable in a suit or a tie. All right. We'll be back on April 11th. Thanks for dressing appropriately for court. Once you sign the reset form, you're excused. Thank you. You're welcome. He does not feel comfortable in a suit or a tie. What about Ghostbusters? Was it good? Uh, no. You know, they tried, you know, just because you've put the original people in it, it doesn't have that same feels. Maybe, maybe I'm looking for the 80s feeling. Yeah. It wasn't there. And you know what? I'm so, I, I have problems with movies when teenagers and children are disrespectful to parents. I, got you. I don't like that. I got you. Hmm? Did you see no, I refuse to see that. It was good. It was, it was, it was not the original. It was funny, right. and the action was better. Mm-hmm. Well. This, the story is like Well, if you, okay, it's good, but the story is like it. You want, it's, it's for the fights, but, uh, and Sam Elliott, they didn't even try to fill his spot. Okay, you know I'm in the twilight of my life, so you're telling me. I should you, use the last time I have to watch Roadhouse. Yes. Okay. <laughs> what does your cues mean? Um, what they're basically saying is we we can't we have a, a conflict. We we can't be the people that the prosecute here. We can't we have to excuse ourselves from this case. Think of the Karen Reed case and the police department up there. They they should have immediately said, Hey, this is too close to home. We have an officer's address that's involved in this. We can't be the ones yeah, investigating. So that's what they're doing. They're accusing themselves. You'll Sometimes you'll see a judge do that if a case comes before where she's related to one side or the other or has direct connection with it or some history on one side or the other. All right, bye-bye. Have a good one. We may cover the Daybell case. I'm, I'm thinking it over. It, it's a tough one because of the, 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 the what happened to the kids, the description, of the injuries the the condition of the bodies when they found them man that is a tough one i mean that's that's right up there with gannon juan rios good morning Honor. good morning where's your client he is right there you are go keep going keep going another dressed appropriately thank you for dressing appropriately for court thank you man. all right where are we on this case discovery Judge, so right now uh, I tried reaching out to the detective to come in to the talk to him. Uh, I'm just asking for some time just to get a better grasp on the case. 
Okay. This case was recently transferred to your court judge. Okay. But you have all the discovery? I believe so. Okay. All right, Ms. Ferguson, recall this back for the week of April 15th. You 18th a good enough time? Yes, Judge. All right, so we'll come back on April 18th. Thank you, Your Honor. All right, thank you. Thank you. Once you sign the reset form, you're excused. Everybody, everybody's gonna be covering Daybell uh, because of the availability of the video with the judge putting it out, releasing it directly. Um, everyone will have access to it. So. Everywhere you go, we'll be covering the Daybell trial. There's so many who want to cover Treehouse 2. Let's see, what's the date for Treehouse? Uh, that... A four four. It's three days into it. Yeah, the Moses Martinez. The funny thing, we're all gonna get the same source. It's what Mark we, Anthony Costa. What we do with that sound before it you goes need to out get on the guys. front row, you were late. <sighs> Mr. Costa is late. Brian Maldonado Arita. Brian Maldonado Arita, Sebastian Delgado, Juan Jose Flores, David Keller, David Machi, or Machi, Araceli Garcia. Misty, uh, we, we're not set to cover the Delphi trial. Uh, that's another huge one, and it's it's crazy as well. It's just every time you think, oh, you know, I've heard it all, more things happen there. We did follow Franklin Tucker the first time through the Treehouse trial, and I think this one will be different with the new judge, and I, I'd definitely like to see that as well. On on four four is it is this just a hearing? I rescue dogs. It's not the retrial. <laughs> I think he might represent himself again. I think he I think he thinks he's learned enough uh, that he can he can do it. And honestly, of, of all the people that have represented themselves in court, he is Alexander not been Castro. the worst by far. There is a new judge in the treehouse trial. Uh, I think the update we're going to get is on the 4th. That might be a hearing where we just get some more details. The state is still pushing. They're, they're going for this conviction. So I think they're going to push forward. All right. What's the date for jury trial? We were going to say uh, August 6th, Judge. August? Why so late? Uh, just because there were other cases just coming up. It's kind of gets the time. Must be a big Other days, it was you know, the week after is a murder, or two weeks later is a murder. All right, so what's happening in July? That one I have to look, look again at the schedule. All right, if y'all can look at the schedule, August is too far away. Yeah. For July? Yes. <laughs> Judge is not happy with a date all the way out in August. Hearing he waived his 90 day trial. Uh, Franklin Tucker did. I agree. I think it was, it was the right move to do for the judge to step aside and disqualify himself. 
Hi. Hi, Judge. Yes. Uh, July 23rd. All right. July 23rd is your jury trial date. And let me make sure. All right. And both parties have all the discovery. We do, Your Honor. Al, could you have your client come up, please? You just really told him to stay down. All right, Mr. Castro, your plea deadline date has expired, so the court will not consider any plea bargain agreements in this case without good cause. Otherwise, you have to plea open to the court. Your jury trial date is going to be July 23rd. All right? Yes, All right, once you sign the reset form, you're excused. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. I think that the problem she had with August was that she has a lot of open slots on her calendar before then. And she's saying, why are you pushing it out so long? She likes justice to move, move swiftly. And if they're pretrial motions, you all need to bring that in on the 22nd. Yeah, we're 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 at a period where we're we're coming up on some very high profile cases all at the same time. Uh, honestly, Daryl Brooks has sort of fallen off the radar, even though he's got some things still moving forward. Uh, we know where he's going to spend the rest of his life, right? Um, that's that's not changing. Um, Sarah Boone, though, we do want to to watch that as it as it comes and develops. It's been a long time coming, so. And Marco, yes, could you bring me this file? It's a 2018-3462-W. Yes. Uh, Robin, the, the reason I'm, I'm curious about the Treehouse uh, trial is that there was so much evidence that wasn't allowed in during the first time. And I, I thought that the exclusion of the evidence was questionable. And I think that it will actually appear as a different trial instead of just a repeat of what happened before. Also, we have um, the, the the main defense witness um, has passed away. Uh, so instead of having that the the live interview, we, we go straight to a deposition interview. Um, it, it, it's going to be different. It will be a different trial. So it'll be interesting to see. Are we going to be working weekends? <laughs> Uh, hopefully, you didn't have anything planned on Saturday. So. Yeah. It's a very different judge. The Sarah Boone trial, I, I really think it, I'll be surprised if it takes more than a week. I can see that thing happening in three or four days. Just end to end. Uh, Paula did pass away in the, the Franklin Tucker case uh, shortly after that. has been a while since we've seen anything from Sarah Boone. We are due a letter, I think. I'll check right now while the judge is waiting for the next case. It's taken a long Thank time. You. Looks like the uh, Florida courts are having some trouble. Their system might be updating or something. Right. It's not responding. Lady Draconis, welcome. Great to have you in here. 
Hope you're doing great this Monday. Okay. Looks like there was a notice of taking depositions filed on March 20th. Let me take a quick peek at that one. This is in the Sarah Boone case. Looks like they took depositions from Detective Chelsea Coespell and Detective Scott Lowen. I think they were both on scene. At the crime scene. Oh, those are the inter the two interviewers, I think. Whoa, wait, 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 wait. Look at this. Comes now to defendant here in name to by and through the undersigned attorney and here about herewith gives notice of the taking of deposition through the um through oral examination of the below named individuals beginning at the hour of one o'clock PM on the seventh day of May, 2024. So they're taking depositions on the seventh of May. Well, guess what isn't that means a week, a week before trial. Cause trial is set, uh, for five thirteen. It's not with judge Wooten anymore. It's with the Kranich. They're taking a deposition from two people the week before trial. That looks like they're going to try to get it pushed out again. Heather Reed, thank you very much. Let me, uh, let me see where that's at. By the way, I, I have about 300,000 birthday wishes on the burner phone, and I've been trying to reply to as many as I possibly can individually. I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to ever catch up. It's... Uh, it's been uh, it's been a lot. Thank you, thank you so much. And thank you for the uh, the copy of the the treehouse murder hearing. It was a conference, trials later in May. Let's see. I don't have the date for the one that is in May. Let me check the record one more time. I show that there's a hearing on the 3rd, Status hearing on the 3rd and then trial on the 13th. But on the 7th, they're going to do the depot, which is less than a week before trial. Unless they've got new information that hasn't been updated in the record yet. There's a status <laughs> hearing on um, April 12th. Then May 3rd, there's a status hearing. And then May 13th, there's trial. May 7th, they're doing depots. Ashley, birthday dinner, I requested uh, hamburger stroganoff, which is one of my favorites, with egg noodles. You have to have an egg noodle, so it's not the same. Christopher Johnson? Oh, sorry. I know what this is. Thank you. One time gig. Is hearing the banging? It's not the dish with the mushrooms. No mushrooms. Uh, this is the defense doing a deposition of the two investigators in the case. Uh, Anna, you're talking about. Uh, the uh, the judge, oh man, I can't can't even think. Zechariah Anderson, um, and if you saw his brother, that was um, Solomon, probably Solomon Anderson. 
there is going to be an appeal. Uh, and I, it's almost time yeah. for that appeal. I think it's it's coming close for that for that to be filed, I think. I think the uh, the interesting thing that's coming up in the Koberger case, I think the judge still has to rule on on a change of venue, right? And I think that's going to win. Um, not not so much on the difficulty oh, yeah. of finding a jury as the the fact that the yeah, so interest in the case is going to just it's, yeah, it's going to clog that courtroom up like you would not believe it's it's going to be a yeah, mess yeah. it's just too oh, small no, yeah. i'm just talking about here this one i've opened up everyone we're still waiting i got you okay debbie thank you very much thanks for your five months of support as well uh, Teresa, we do it from scratch uh you cook uh, one or two pounds of hamburger, depending on how many kids are going to eat dinner, dinner that day. Um, brown the hamburger. And I, I'm usually pretty picky about the seasoning because the seasoning in the hamburger is where the, the dish is made. I mean, you have to start with proper hamburger. But. Um, I'm filing an e, uh, e file on the affidavit to some authority for a Johnny Webb that's on the. Mm -hmm. um, he has not been checking in with the office. I would like to know if, 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 it, if it could be submitted. Oh, sure. If you'll have them uh, pull it for me. Okay. Thank you, Jen. You're welcome. Thank you. I'll have that before. Thank you, Jen. You're welcome. Fourteenth is back up. Do we want to watch some jury selection? Let's see if we can get over to fourteenth really quickly. If I'm here in the sawzall. That's progress too. I'm struggling to find the court. Okay, I found it. Hang on. I think it's... There we go. I don't want Miss Bramlett and Miss Baxter to feel left out. I'm sure that would matter. So we're going <laughs> we're going to put them up here and okay. ask them a few questions. No, you're, you're, you're good right where you're at. Jury selection on camera. I need to ask Miss Baxter about her husband's secret hunting spots. <laughs> she has so to we're answer. Have to put them right down here. She so has to can, answer it or else. And probably, yeah, probably easier to go that way. Miss Bramlett, if you'll make your way up here, ma'am. However, you can get them over there, Gary. You have to take them out the back door. I just want you to move those chairs. <laughs> What's wrong with the jurors' chairs? They're not as good as your chair. Miss Baxter. I love watching jury selection because we don't normally get to see it. Let's see if I can put comments up here so they don't cover up everything that's going on. Don, my numbers are cut off. What numbers, Miss Bramblett? Miss Bramblett is 176. And Ms. Baxter's number. 
Peter Ware, congratulations on being 11th. One month away from Ladies orders. and gentlemen, I've already introduced myself. I've introduced the, uh, the attorneys and Ms. Wilkinson. What we're going to do now is we're going to ask you uh, some questions. The, uh, the attorneys have the right to ask you questions. And keep in mind, the purpose of these questions are to try to pick the, the fairest and best jury we can for this case. You may be a great juror for another case. You may not be perfect for this case or vice versa. So if the attorneys ask you a personal question, keep in mind, it's to find out, make sure you don't know anything about this case. You don't have any preconceived ideas. You don't have anything in your past that may affect your decision today other than just your, your, your whatever's made you who you are. Uh, but if, if you uh, have supper to one of the prosecutors or if you have supper uh, with, with Mr. Axon or his client, you're probably not going to be on this jury. So that's the purpose of these questions. And to facilitate that process, there are some preliminary questions that each of you are going to answer. Then the attorneys may ask you some specific questions. Sergeant Applewhite. I'm going to ask that you hand that back to Mr. Wyman. Just a second. Uh, Mr. Wyman and the rest of you, what we're going to do is you're going to be asked your name, the town or city you live in, your occupation, your marital status, your spouse's occupation, the number of children and their occupations if they're employed, prior jury service, are you a party in any pending or past lawsuit, do you know anyone in the courtroom, uh, have you had any experience with the state attorney's office or a law enforcement agency that might affect your influence your decision? And can and will you be fair and impartial juror based upon and base your decision solely upon the evidence in the law? You don't have to remember all those questions. What we're going to do is Mr. Wyman is going to answer those individually, and then he's going to pass that card down so you can read the questions and answer those. And after that, the attorneys may have some questions. Were you sworn at all as a jury down there in the other courtroom? So I'm going to ask the clerk to give you the initial swearing. Uh, this relates to the, the jury questions you're about to be asked. Did you raise your right hand? You do solemnly swear or affirm that you will truthfully answer make to all questions which shall be put to you by the court or the attorneys touching on your qualifications to serve the jury in this case. So I hope you like it. Thank you. And Mr. Wyman, we'll start with you on that cheat sheet you've got in your hand there. Just kind of go through those if you will, please. Thank you, Wyman. Thank you. And Ms. Stevens? Yes, my name is Jessica Stevens. I live in Pottonville, Florida. A TSA, which is teaching on special assignment as an assistant principal at Cottonville Elementary School. I am married. My husband <coughs> is a director at Jackson Hospital. I have two teenagers. My son works at a tire company, and my daughter is in high school. I have no prior jury service. Number eight is no. Number nine, I somewhat know this man here, Mr. Pippen, coming through Cottonville Elementary School. Number 10 is no, and number 11 is yes. Thank you. I need to, for record purposes, we need to reflect the the longer questions. Number eight, when a, when a juror says number eight, they're referring to the question, are you a party in any pending or past lawsuit, parentheses, criminal or civil? Question number nine is, do you know anyone in the courtroom? Question number 10 is, have you had any experience with the state attorney's office or a law enforcement agency that would influence your decision? And question number 11 is, 
can and will you be a fair and impartial juror and base your decision solely on the evidence in the law? That's just for the record purposes. If someone ever reads it and you say no with number nine, we'll know what number nine is. And we're working on Mr. Davenport, juror number seven. My name is Richard Davenport. I live in Graceville. Uh, I'm a retired teacher now teaching at the Baptist University of Fort in Graceville. Uh, I'm married. My wife is a financial bookkeeper in Chipley. I have two children. One is a civil engineer and the other is a student at Troy University. I have no prior jury service. Uh, not party to a pending or past lawsuit. Do not know anyone in the courtroom. Uh, do not have experience with the state's attorney's office and will be a fair and impartial juror. Thank you, Mr. Davenport. Mr. Reeder. Thank you, Edward Reeder. <coughs> Mariana, school manager at Hill Sports, single, spouse, have one child, which attends Cockdale Elementary School, uh, never had jury service, uh, not many parties uh, in their past lawsuits. Never had any experience with the state attorney's office. Thank you, Mr. Reader. Ms. Brunson. Um, my name is Latonya Brunson. I live in Marietta, Florida. I work from home during the day, and then I'm an overnight um, home health aide in Tallahassee. I'm single, um, no spouse occupation, no children, no prior jury service. No to question eight, no to question nine, um, no to question ten, and yes, I will be there. And <clears throat> Thank you, Ms. Brunson. Mr. Bryant? Mark Bryant, from Alpha Four, uh, occupation. I work at Emmerdale Community Center. I'm recently married on the South Occupation, U.S. Express. Can you keep up with it, Mr. Phillips? Goes? Yeah, yeah we'll, we'll do Mr. Phillips, you'll just go and start. So we're on juror number 49, Mr. Phillips. Oh. Uh, 49, James Phillips. I live in Mariana. Uh, occupation, work for the Department of Juvenile Justice. Uh, I am married. My spouse's occupation, she's a civil engineer here in town. Got two kids, they're both uh, going to Florida State. Prior jury service, but it's been over 10 years ago, I think. I don't even remember much about that. But, uh, any uh, in lawsuit? No, know anybody in the courtroom? I know Sherry. Sorry to sing the out, Sherry. I know Sherry from high school. Uh, any experienced state attorney's office or law enforcement agency uh, influence decision? No. And it will be fair and partial juror. Uh, yes. Thank you, Mr. Phillips. Ms. Murdoch. My name is Marcy Murdoch, juror number 046. Um, I'm from Malone, Florida. I'm a registered nurse at Jackson Hospital. I'm single. I have no children. I have no prior jury service. I am in no past or pending lawsuit. I do know quite a few people in the courtroom. Uh, any experience with any state attorney's office or law enforcement agency that would approve, I would be a fair and partial jury driver. Thank you, Ms. Whitten. I'm Rebecca Whitten uh, from Malone, Bascom area. Um, I'm retired. 
I worked for the Georgia Department of Corrections for 15 years. I am married. My husband is the regional transportation manager for Family Dollar Dollar Tree. Uh, I have two children. My daughter is the deputy town clerk for Greenwood. My son is a math teacher in Blakely, Georgia. Uh, my prior jury service was over 20 years ago. I'm not a party in any pending or past lawsuit. Um, I know several people in the uh, courtroom, Ms. Murdoch, Ms. Baxter, Ms. Williams. <laughs> um, I have no experience with the state attorney's office, but like I said, I, I am retired from the Department of Corrections. Um, and there, if it were an introduction of contraband, it would influence my decision. Um, oh, she's off. Other than that, I can and will be a fair and impartial juror and base my decision solely. Thank you, Ms. Whitten. Ms. Parker. My name is Isabel Parker. <clears throat> I live in Mariana. I'm a, a registered nurse for Department of Corrections. I'm single. Uh, I do not have a spouse. I have three children. One of them, I don't know what his uh, is technically called, but he works on jets. And the other one is a veterinarian technician, and the other one is a stay-at-home mom. And I haven't been on any jury service. And note in number eight, and note in number nine, and note in ten, and yes to that. Thank you, Ms. Parker. And Mr. Simmons. Uh, my name is Scott Simmons. I'm juror number 024. I do live in Mariana. My, my occupation is a finance and accounting facility, Bay County Tax Collector in the city. I'm also currently here in the National Guard serving in Tallahassee, first sergeant there. I am married. My spouse's occupation currently is a stay at home mom, um, full time student for psychology. I have three children. One of them is in food service, and the other are full time students at K through 8 here in Mariana. Prior service, zero. And my party is pending for past lawsuit. No, I'm not. Do you know anybody in the courtroom other than passing shopping at Walmart? No. Um, have you ever had experience with a state's attorney's office or a law enforcement agency? It will influence my decision. The answer is no. It cannot. It will be a fair, partial juror based on the decision pulled upon evidence. Yes. Thank you, Mr. Simmons and Mr. Peacock. <clears throat> Billy Peacock, living in Mary Ann, self employed, or the worst. Two children. One self employed with the farm. The other one works with Florida Peanut Association. Uh, note to number seven. Yes. Number eight. Yes to number nine. No to number ten. Yes to number nine. Thank you, Mr. Peacock. Please, Mr. Pippen. My name is Billy Pippen. I'm from Cottondale, Florida. I'm a diesel mechanic for Thompson Tractor in Dallas City. I'm single. I have uh, one child in pre K still. No prior jury service, uh, not a party in any lawsuit, uh, besides the Stevens, as she stated. That's the only, that's the only person I know. Uh, uh, no to 10, 11, yes. Thank you, Mr. Pippen. And Miss, is it Ayers? Ayers. Ayers. Miss Ayers. Um, my name is Cheryl Ayers. Hi. Uh, Living in the streets. I'm a stay at home mom. Married. My husband does something with computers for the Department of Corrections. I love that. My husband does something with computers for the Department of Corrections. Two children. One's in school. 
<laughs> Keeping an eye on the Becky Hill press conference. It hasn't started yet. Uh, I've never been in jury service. Never had any pending or past lawsuits. I do know Miss Jackie. No to 10. 11, I believe. Ms. Ayers, you're the first person that knows Miss um, Wilkinson. So the question for you is, given your relationship with her, do you think you'd be fair and impartial knowing that you know her, knowing that she's the one that's accused of a crime? Um, I've met her once. And then, uh, OK, we're going to cut away and take this, uh, take this live here just one second. OK. How many times are you? Hang on one second. Lewis, our counsel for uh, Miss Becky Hill, the Colleton County Clerk of Court. Uh, today will be brief, but today's important. Um, obviously, over the last few months, uh, Miss Hill has really wanted to address her constituents. Um, obviously, with things that were going on, um, she has certain rights and, and she's got to uh, protect herself, most of which came under the advice of counsel. Um, and that, I think, has been lost on a lot of people with everything that's been going on, is that as clerk of court, uh, you do have a constituency, the residents here in Carlton County. She's elected, and that's so why they talking about this. And could have occurred uh, hiding behind a computer screen or hiding behind her lawyers, and uh, Ms. Hill was committed to that not happening. Um, and I stand with her, and I also respect her very much uh, for being here today. So without further Looks like ado, she has a written statement. I'll turn the floor over to, to check you. Good morning, everyone. It has been my honor and pleasure to serve as your Colleton County Clerk of Court over these past four years. The clerk's office has provided many services to the to the citizens of Colleton County. The Colleton County Clerk's Office is proud of our services and the significant impacts we have made in the history of South Carolina. Here at the Colleton County Courthouse, you will find a full service passport office with certified agents ready to help you, as well as notary services and e-filing that has streamlined our civil processes. Could Another be. significant impact in our clerk's office was in 2023, when we had to manage one of the biggest trials in South Carolina history. Our small town came together and made everyone proud. Managing a trial was such importance to the people of South Carolina, as well as of the national and international media, interest and public scrutiny, and has caused me to reflect upon decisions involving my stay in the office of the clerk of court. And so after much reflection, I have decided that it is best not to run again for re-election. I will now be able to focus on being a wife, a mother, and grandmother to my two grand boys and will be spending time with the people who mean the most to me. With the upcoming election, I wanted to ensure that I provided ample time for other Republican candidates who may be interested in pursuing this position. I want to publicly thank all of the citizens of Colleton County who voted for me, who have supported me, and who have stood by me. I also want to take just a moment to extend heartfelt condolences to the family and friends of a very, very kind professional educator here in Colleton County who has departed this life and gone on to the other life that she has. And that is the family of Debbie Price. And so today I just want to take a few seconds of silence just to remember her and her family and friends. She was a loud airplane. I also want to thank my amazing staff who work in the clerk of court's office for the wonderful job that they have done and that they will continue to do. We are fortunate to have strong leadership within our office and I am proud to say that our clerk's office will seamlessly move forward. I look forward to all of the future holds and will finally remember the true amazing friendships that I have made while serving the incredible people of Colleton County. And so, 
As we fix our eyes forward, I would like to announce also that my resignation as clerk of court will be effective immediately. Thank you. She's done. She she walked out the doors and now she's done. Ladies and gentlemen, um, I do have in my hand uh, a signed copy of Ms. Hill's official resignation. Uh, that will be forwarded to the uh, governor's office, uh, Governor Henry Master's office, uh, later today. Um, I've served in the South Carolina State House for over a decade now. Uh, when we run as elected officials in this state, we run publicly. Um, our lives become public. We serve publicly. And it's only fitting, and, and I respect Ms. Hill very much, uh, that the conclusion of her service also happens publicly. Um, I'll be taking a couple of questions, but I do want to say one thing because I know that there are speculation and rumors of uh, having lived in a small town South Carolina my entire life. I can see where people's minds may run after an announcement such as this. So let me be extremely clear. Today is not in response whatsoever to anything going on with any investigation or, or anything of that nature. And I'm going to say that one more time. Today is not in response to any new development of some investigation or anything like that. Uh, that just today doesn't ring is very about loudly the for people me. of Colleton County. Uh, there is still another week um, available for filing for the clerk of court's office. Um, and it is what it is. Uh, if Miss Hill had stayed in office, um, the people of Collison County would be the ones who uh, get distracted to a certain degree uh, because there are a number of candidates running for clerk of court. Uh, those Hill's candidates resignation. have different things that they, different platforms that they want to campaign on. Um, and it would be inevitable that if Becky was still serving while those candidates were campaigning, um, every time they mention something, every time there's an article, every time there's a forum and candidates are discussing uh, the future that they seek to create for uh, the courthouse behind us, uh, there will be a degree of a cloud over that because it will be talking about the sitting clerk, etc. So this decision was made wholeheartedly by Ms. Hill uh, for the benefit uh, and, and to the benefit of the citizens of Collison County. Uh, we will not address any investigation stuff, whether it be sled or state ethics or anything like that. Uh, so please, I know it's tough. I can see some of the faces There's out there. No There's no questions about any There's of no that. questions anyone uh, wants to ask, ask that they're willing to answer. I'm going to dodge it uh, because we're not going to comment on that. We're not going to detract uh, from, the, from the positive nature of today, the bittersweet positive nature of today uh, with that. So with that said, um, I would like to acknowledge behind us faithful members of the clerk of court's office. Uh, these are dedicated employees to the people of Colleton County. Um, and we want to thank them for everything that they uh, have been doing, everything that they will continue to do uh, so that we can continue to make Colleton County as great uh, as it is. Uh, Looks so like a po said, protester off on the right. Any questions. Possible pray for peace sign. Justin, obviously we haven't talked to you guys since January. Justice Toll said what she said during that hearing. I'm just wondering if your response to that publicly. Um, I mean, I, we respect Justice Toll, and uh, she is a, a longtime jurist in this state. I don't think you'll find any lawyer that doesn't respect her, um, and we respect her decision in court. Uh, we respect her review of things. And uh, the comments that she made, uh, she is former Chief Justice told. So, uh, so at present, uh, with the resignation of Ms. Hill, uh, the deputy clerk will uh, step in immediately to, to effectively run the clerk's office. Um, and we anticipate that at some point in the immediate future, Governor McMaster uh, may appoint a formal clerk of court. Uh, to step in and actually be uh, formally in charge. But for right now, uh, and that's one thing uh, that, that took some timeline and everything up to make sure uh, that with this decision, the clerk's office could continue to run effectively, efficiently, 
uh, for litigants and for the citizens. So uh, there will be no gaps in service whatsoever to the people of Carlton County. Who is the deputy clerk right now? Jurors will still be getting Gary rides. Everything, everything will be just as normal. Right yeah. Gary, are you running? Eggs. Are you planning to run for the clerk's office? Um, I'm, <coughs> I'm currently here and I'm, I'm on the county's time and I can't discuss that. Thank you. That was a good answer. Thank Gary, you. good what job. What would you say was the deciding factor in announcing your resignation today? Oh, without a doubt, my grandchildren. If you have grandchildren, you know. So you're saying your, your resignation had nothing to do at all with the investigation? Yes, sir. What, what, the resignation is strictly about the people of Colleton. Um, and again, we're not going to get into uh, any of the investigation stuff and all that as things are still open. Uh, but the primary and the main focus of uh, today is what is in the best interest of the constituency, the, the public. Um, and this ended up being the, the, out of the options that were on the table, for example, uh, just not running again and staying in office through the election, et cetera. Uh, like I mentioned earlier, that ran the risk of uh, detracting or impeding the public's ability to uh, get digest information from candidates about what they want to offer. Um, so that's why, that's why the decision was made. We'll take one more question. Yes, sir. That is Who's playing the music? Um, I believe I, I would have to double double check, uh, but I believe the governor would have the ability to make an appointment. Um, I don't know that there would be a special election. However, what that would not it? that wouldn't be out of the question. Um, that question would probably be more uh, directed to the state, right? ele uh, state election commission. Um, and if there is a special election, of course, uh, that will be announced um, by the the powers that be in the elections office, um, and then folks will campaign, and uh, the result will be the result, and then you will have your normal election in November. Um, so thank y'all so very much. All right, and they're off. That's it. That's it. Right. Uh, so, so the, what we just watched, uh, there was a, there was a quick. Um, there she goes. She's, she's not going back in the building. Effective immediately. She's not going back to her office. She's packed her stuff and she's gone. She's getting her car. She's going to drive away. Um, that's that's a very, that's a very, well, I would say it's a very expected move. Um, but the fact that she says uh, resigning immediately because of this grandkids, grandkids. I just, I thought of my grandkids this morning and I'm like, I'm quitting today. Now I realize grandkids are a great reason to resign. You know, say, hey, I'm missing time with my family, but uh, I don't know. That it didn't, you, didn't ring true. We're going to jump back um, and return to our jury selection process. About is, we now, are watching the way a jury it's defined live. Is it's defined and it's negative. Okay. Jurors so are being a reason is not man. a mere possible doubt, a speculative, imaginary, or forced doubt. Thank you, Paula. Such a doubt must not influence you to return a verdict of not guilty if you have an abiding conviction of guilt. On the other hand, if, after carefully considering, Comparing and weighing all the evidence, there is not an abiding conviction of guilt. Or if having a conviction it is one which is not stable, but one which wavers and vacillates, then the charge does not prove beyond every reasonable doubt, and you must find the defendant not guilty because the doubt is reasonable. Okay. It's a pretty big definition, right? Okay. And um, if I were to tell you we are going to define what a cat is, and I said, well, a cat is not a giraffe, it's not an elephant. It's not a bird. It's not a fish. Sure, that helps you a little bit, but might not be the best. Okay, so let's let's talk a little bit about a reasonable doubt. Okay, I want to talk to you about a reasonable. I want to unpack that a little bit because this will be the standard that you will be applying if you are selected. Okay. Thank you. Ken. So, um, one of the things that we are not going to do in jury selection is talk about the facts of the case. So, a lot of the ways that we come up with uh, ways to talk with you about things is to come up with funny or silly hypotheticals. Okay. So, um, Mr. Wild, I'll pick on you. You kind of are on the hot seat, okay? I'm sorry, I'm having to hear that well. I can't. Gotcha. I'm gonna. Is it okay if I pick on you? Sure. All right. We're talking about a reasonable doubt here, okay? So let's say um, well, you uh, you're, you're self-employed, right? 
Where do you, you said you are, uh, you work for in, in the fishing industry, right? Yeah. Okay. You spend a lot of your time outside though, right? Okay. So I want you to per, uh, pretend for this hypothetical that you have to go into an office. Okay. And in the morning you wake up, you check your phone and the forecast says a hundred percent chance of, of thunderstorms. Okay. You go into work, you work in a building all day, you come in out of that building and uh, you see people walking around with their umbrellas. Okay. And uh, looks like it has just rained everywhere. Okay. And there's a fire truck at the end of the road and there's a sign above it saying fire truck has doused the whole city. Okay. Now, would you agree with me that they just going, what? that could be possible? Yeah. Okay. But would you agree with me that that's not reasonable? Not reasonable. And why would that be? Why would the fire truck be down here with rain all over the people? Right. <laughs> doesn't doesn't make sense, right? You saw, I mean, you can point to certain things in the hypothetical, right? You, um, the forecast, right? People walking around with umbrellas. Right. Fire trucks probably wouldn't be spraying people, no. right? No necessarily need for an umbrella, then, right? Okay. Um, so, what about uh, a speculative, imaginary, or forced doubt? Anybody got any ideas what those doubts might be or look like? Anybody? Uh, speculative doubt, right? Requires you make assumptions. Conjecture, right? Agree with me on that? Imaginary doubt's probably the most extreme. Whatever we can imagine. A little green Martian came out of the sky, and moved the ground, right? What about a forced doubt? My idea what a forced doubt is? Anybody have, want to take a stab at it? Forced doubt? A forced doubt. No. Someone makes you. Right, exactly. Right? Yeah. A good example of that would be kind of what we just, what y'all just said. Is that where, let's say, um, again, for a hypothetical, you're convinced the, the state has proven to you beyond a reasonable doubt that they've proven the case. But you go back there and you say, it just can't be. All the evidence points beyond a reasonable doubt to this way, and you say, no, nah, it can't be. That'd be a force, okay? Just kind of what y'all said, all right? All right, well, each crime has elements, okay? And at the end of the trial, like I said, you're gonna get the instruction from the judge about what those elements are for each crime. And I think I told you that um, Ms. Wilkinson's been charged with uh, disorderly conduct and resisting an officer without violence. Um, there we go. Those are the charges. Disorderly conduct and resisting um, officer without violence. Mr. Davenport, when you hear disorderly conduct, what's the first thing that comes to mind? What are we talking about? Uh, well, as a school teacher. Yeah. Uh, somebody who misbehaves and doesn't follow orders. Sure, right. Right. Mr. Reader, what do you think? What comes to your mind when you hear disorderly conduct? Yeah. Ms. Brunson, kind of thing. you have anything to add to that, maybe? Right. So disorderly conduct is... I think a lot of the times we might hear it more of breach of the peace. Does anyone know what that is? Breach of the peace? Yeah? I anticipate the judge is going to tell you that there's one element to disorderly conduct and that the state would have to prove beyond to, uh, beyond to the exclusion of every reasonable doubt, and that is the defendant affected the peace and quiet of persons who witnessed the act or acts. So... Peace and quiet, right? This is why we send you to internet ownership in the morning. Outrage the sense of public decency. Okay. Yeah, the what about um, resisting an officer without violence? It's a verbal order. Right. Okay. So an officer tells you to do something and you don't obey that, right? Without violence. Mm -hmm. Right? I want to agree with that? Okay. I have a list of names here that I want to read, and um, if you believe you may know this indivi these individuals, please let me know, okay? These will be witnesses in the uh, trial. William generally. Price. Roger Wilkinson. Watch for hands here. Sandra Vickers. I think it's Kayla Vickers Christian. Lenny Neal. And James Suggs. 
And by show of hands, if you think you may know those individuals I just listed. For the record, I don't see you. All right. Sign. So I want to talk to you a little bit about um, credibility of witnesses, okay? Um, one of the one of your jobs as a juror, if you are selected, is to is going to be to weigh the credibility of witnesses. It's the guy one in you from the bottom. Ears. That's one of your is jobs. He plug in his ears to see. To and ears. that you can believe all of somebody's testimony, parts of their testimony, or none of their testimony. You decide that. Um. So, Mr. Bryant, you said you got six kids. Is that right? I've got two. Okay. Um, let's say one day you come home and you walk in your house Thank you. and you see a cookie jar on the floor in the kitchen. Some of the cookies are gone. Okay. And um, I would assume that you probably don't even need to line up your children to figure out which one of the kids probably ate the cookies or involved with that. No, some of them. Two of them, right. Because you know, you know which ones are the mischievous ones, right? Okay. All right, let's say you did line them up, right? I bet you you could tell me exactly which one was telling you a fib and which one was telling you the truth about what happened to the cook. Whatever, whatever may happen, right? I don't know. One of them way too cute. Right. Pretty much. Okay, yeah. And that's what, because you, you know your kids, right? You know them. You know exactly you know, a little about them. But um, when the state calls witnesses to the stand here, does anyone understand that their testimony is out? We, we just talked about that, right? But you're not going to know them. You're not going to know who they are. Okay. Um, so when you're weighing their credibility, what would you be looking for or listening for when you're judging their credibility? Is there sense? Inconsistency. Inconsistency. Okay. Maybe they made a statement uh, in the past that's inconsistent with what they said on the stand, right? That'd be something you'd consider. What else? There are some Ms. states, Murdoch, there's some courtrooms you, where you juries are not for secret. Or this is one for of them. When you're judging someone's credibility, body language. Body language, right? Okay. Sound voice. Okay. Whether they're confident in what you Sure. What else? What about if they had an accurate memory? That'd be something you consider? Yeah. Um, what about if their testimony agreed with the other testimony that was the case? These are all potential well, jurors. Something. They're probably going to seat six or eight of them on a panel. Yeah. I, don't, I don't know how many. But these are potential jurors being asked questions to see if they are good candidates for to be. All right. Who here likes service? to watch those uh, the crime dramas on TV or maybe even the documentaries? Is anyone watching those? Show of hands. Okay. Yes. Let's see. Uh, let's see. Now, now he's asking about those crime documentaries. Miss Smith, mm -hmm. you watch them. Which one do you have a favorite? Uh, first 48. First 48, okay. Uh, ID Channel. If she um, says recovery addicts. If she says recovery addicts, I would die. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> My wife loves them, and, and she has them on, and I, I get kind of swept into them. But, yeah, so what types of evidence do you see on those types of cases? Um, all kinds. They have... Right. Um, they have the actual evidence, they have physical evidence, and then, you know, they have the presumptions and all that nice little stuff. Yeah, right. Physical evidence, which would be like, what, the actual, uh, a gun or, you know, a knife or whatever. Those would be physical, right? Of course. Okay. Um, photographs, right, be physical evidence. Okay. Um, what about DNA? Yes. Scientific evidence, right? Yes. Okay. Um other types are probably on there. You all know them. Um, video surveillance, um, stuff like that, right? Okay. Um, does everyone understand that those evidence, those pieces of evidence exist, okay? But they don't exist in every case. Does everyone agree with that? Yes. Okay. And those shows are for our entertainment, right? Usually 30, 40 minutes. They solve a huge crime, right? Yeah. <clears throat> Is there anybody here that would require the state to put on a particular piece of evidence? All right, Mr. Reader. In all the circumstances like the disorderly conduct, you know, resistant arrest, all the things on okay. there, first special violation, stuff like that. Okay. Okay. Mr. Gill, I know we have at least one juror that needs to use the restroom. Oh, any, sure. any other jurors that need to take a restroom break? 
Okay. We're going to go ahead and do it. How much longer do you have on your, on your questioning? Um, just a few specific, not, not too much longer. Um, let's go ahead and let everyone take a restroom break. I don't want anybody to be uncomfortable. So if you want to use the restroom, ladies and gentlemen, go through the door here. It's on the right. If you want to stay where you're at, you're certainly okay to do that. We're going to take a short recess. Um, but don't don't stay where you're at and use the restroom, please. That's, that's stay our on only. There. That's our only uh, stipulation. Now, this you, you, a lot of people are saying, "What what is happening? Why are you able to see the jury?" Right? Um, the, I love I love courtrooms like this because uh, every trial that has a jury goes through this process. Okay, but many 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 courtrooms have this idea and this philosophy that they that they hold to yeah. that jury service is secret i i can't i probably shouldn't talk unless it's on the record and i hate to do that any no, disrespect but we'll ask you you want to have a question about one somebody you may know yes. you okay, want good. more information on that witness okay perfect we'll, we'll get some yeah. clarification in just a moment then <laughs> Okay, um, so this this process happens all the time, and if you've been to, if you've been called to jury duty or called to summoned to jury duty, you're you're probably familiar with this, where you get asked questions and you may get selected, you might not make it, and you um you may want to make it, and other people who don't do make it instead. Miss Wilkinson, um, do you need a restroom break, ma'am? Okay, we have one back here if you need it now, okay. so you won't have to worry about running the jurors. Thank you, yes, ma'am. Miss Wilkinson is the defendant; she's the one sitting down on the left left hand side of the window right over there right over there down, 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 down there there she is anyway so this process is is really cool uh the idea of a jury being secret is not like enshrined in the constitution okay it's not it's not guaranteed and and so because it's not even though we've sort of had the practice there are some courts that show the jury and there there are even some trials like live trials where the camera in court is allowed to show the jury as long as they don't zoom in on their faces. Now it's rare. It's rare to see that. Usually we're used to, you know, saying, don't show the jury. We shouldn't see any of them. You know, we're too close. We're nervous for the cameraman because if a jury member leans forward, like in the Murdoch trial, you know, suddenly we get their face. Um, but these are potential jurors and we're hearing their names and they're giving their answers. And this is a public process. That, that we get to watch. So I, I love when it, when a court does this publicly where we can watch this because we so many of us miss that in the in the court proceedings. Why bother with a number? Thank you. I think industry talks fast. I think the number is for the convenience of the court. Thank you. Britt Bottoms, uh, thanks, R.A., and chat for being a distraction today. Got news today. My grandfather is probably in her last days. Oh, Britt Bottoms, I am sorry. I'm sorry. Prayers for you and her. Yeah. Brit Bottoms, thank the you, trial. by the way, for the, uh, uh, the pickle flavored cashews. Oh, those are delicious. Got two bags of those sent to me. I'm not, I have to look. Who was the other one? I have to look at the. I have to look where the note went. I, I can't remember who the other note was. All right. Um, Let's see, let's see, let's see. We have a couple. Let's see. Uh, thank you for the, the birthday wishes, by the way, Paula, Kim R, uh, KBF. It was probably resigner face charges. That was uh, um, for um, Becky Hill, the, the clerk from the, the Murdoch trial, that uh, acted in ways that caused problems for the court with the jury. Britt Bottoms, thank you very much. And uh, my heart goes out to you and, uh, and your family at this time. All right. The uh, do you like pickled? No, no. I, I believe it or not, I don't. I tried to make my own one time, and I think I just about killed myself. Apparently, you can't just use pickle juice and stick the eggs in and call it good. Uh, it just they just go bad, and it was it was so bad, was so so bad. Contenta, 1979. I've been MIA. Work's been crazy. There's a kitty cat. The family. Dude. We're doing well. The cat is is also doing well. Um, while I was down under the house repairing the plumbing, the cat discovered the crawl space and wanted to uh, wanted to go underneath as well. But I didn't want the cat to use the crawl space as a litter box, and so I was like trying to keep the cat out. It was, it was crazy. 
Just girl baking. I have many cards that people send me, including yours. Thank you. Um, yes, I, I read them and I, I share them with my wife as well. And some of them are just amazing. I, I've received a lot of cards from people who are here in chat and many cards from people who never chat and, and say, hey, I've been here since, you know, I've been here 11 months. And, you know, I, I'm never in chat. You know, the last one I just got the other day was because, you know, I watch on Roku and, uh, and, and, you know, I can't figure out the chat thing, but I love this and it's helped me at the time of my life. That particular individual is telling me about how they, you know, when they have a hard day, they go back and they watch the bus, the, uh, the bus, um, police chase, <laughs> how much they like that. So I, I appreciate it. The, the cards have been, have been amazing and thoughtful and I'm, it's, uh, it's wonderful. Don't have a Bucky's near me yet. Not even in my state yet. The closest one I believe is in South Carolina. The whispering was coming from the defense table where they look like they're, I don't know, is that like canoodling? What? Okay. I guess it was just whispering in her ear. It looked like they were closer. Defense attorney is whispering to his client regarding the jurors. Yes, both sides at a later point in this process are going to have the opportunity to request that the judge strike jurors from the potential pool for cause. They're going to tell the judge, look, juror number two, he kept his fingers in his ears the whole time and he's going, la, 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 la. Clearly, uh, we, that will just be a mock in the courtroom. We can't put up with that. Uh, he doesn't want to be here. Let's let him go. And, and that would be a for cause um, strike. They also get the opportunity, and I don't know how many in this particular case, it's probably maybe three um, strikes where they can do um, without cause, where they can literally just preemptive, uh, was it preemptive? I always say that word wrong. A strike where they just say, we don't want that person. We don't have to tell you why. We don't have to make a reason or an excuse. We just don't want juror number seven. And, and they get it. They get the, the free strike. And the process is gone, goes through like this. The judge will say, well, we've got all the jurors seated by the number. Okay, this is where the juror numbers come in, and it's for the use of the court. And so the first juror that's seated is juror number one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. They first e eliminate those that are um, that have a cause, have a reason to be kicked out, whether it's you know a medical condition that they're not allowed, they can't stay, sit still, or they can't focus, or they're they're on medication that makes them sleepy. You know, there's all sorts of reasons that will be for a cause. Then once they're removed, they take their mini jurors, starting at the lowest number, and work their way through, and one side gets to choose if they want them kicked off, and then the other side gets to choose, and either one can. Um, and then if they're not kicked off and they're not removed for cause, they're seated on the jury. As they work through those numbers, they eventually fill all the spots and fill the alternates, and then you have a jury impaneled, and you might not ever get to the back row. So, all right. Um, We'll keep an eye on this. Let me let me jump down to Judge Boyd for a minute. We want to come back to this. Judge Boyd, I think, had a spicy one just a moment ago. Let's, uh, let's see if we can play this. Um, how are we going to do this? Yeah, let's do this right here. All right. If you're sitting behind the court reporter, no talking. We're about to go on the record. I'm going to put us in two boxes so we can watch that. Court, court is court calling well. 2022 CR 7775, State of Texas versus Jules Regine Alonzo. If I can have parties announced for the record for the state. Hank Wilkins for the state, Your Honor. Defense. Good morning, Your Honor. Robert Olmo. And are you Miss Alonzo? Yes. Showing you what's entitled motion to revoke community supervision. Did you review that with your attorney? Did you understand it? Yes, Your Honor. All right. Why is there the crowd over here? Okay. All right. Are you the same uh, Jules Alonzo who was placed on community supervision and cause number 2022 CR 7775 for the offense of theft under $2,500 enhanced on March 27, 2023 for a term of four years? Is that you? Yes, Your Honor. State? Violated condition number four in Bear County, Texas, the defendant Jules uh, Regine Alonzo did then and there fail to report to the supervision officer as directed for the months of April and May of 2023 
in violation of condition number four. How do you plead to that? True or not true? It's true. State? Oh, Your Honor, we waive the other violations alleged. Any objections? No objection, Your Honor. Did you understand by pleading true to violation of condition number four, the court could find it true, grant the motion, and sentence you up to six months in the state jail facility? Yes, Your Honor. Knowing that, do you still wish to plead true to violation of condition number four? Yes, Your Honor. Court will find violation of condition number four true. Is there a proposed agreement? There is, Your Honor. We're asking that you deny the motion, uh, continue the defendant, uh, and avenge her condi alternate amendment her conditions for SATA, uh, followed by aftercare, um, as recommended by the jail tap, uh, and that she stay in custody uh, waiting for a spot in SATA judge. All right. So what, what has she done while on probation? Not a lot, Judge. Have you done anything? No, ma'am. All but right. I so do need help. I'm sorry? But I do need help. Well, why didn't you raise your right hand? Do you solemnly swear or affirm the testimony you give will be the truth, that nothing but the truth will help you, God? Yes, sir. You can lower your hand. State your name for the record. All right, so. We pause the other jury one because the jurors just coming back. They're about to start. Uh, actually, this Judge Boyd. This is incorrect. According to this paperwork, it says the, the punishment is to be assessed at six months in the state jail facility. But according to the judgment, the terms of the plea bargain was, plea bargain was two years in the state jail facility, suspended and probated for four years. But you say you need help? Yes, sir. Well, why didn't you ask for that before? Um, oh, because last time I was pregnant and you offered a year state jail or four years probation, I didn't want to have my baby in jail. All right. So it is actually... Her underlying is two years in the state jail facility and not six months in the state jail facility. So where is your child? Uh, she's with my mom. And so you had your child. Was your child born positive for anything? Mm -hmm. And I see where I referred you to felony drug court. I did a referral to Esperanza court. So why are you just now saying that you need help when I've offered you help? Um, because I was supposed to be in custody and y'all let me out. <laughs> so we, we let her out of custody and then you go use drugs or whatever you've no, been doing. I didn't doing. use no drugs when I got out. Well, you didn't report. So it's our fault. No, not at all. It's my fault. All right. So why are you acting as though it's our fault? I'm not saying it's your fault, Your Honor, at all. I mean, well, you just said, well, y'all let me out. Yeah. But it's, I got scared. I got scared because y'all let me out and I wasn't supposed to be let out. Yeah. And instead of you coming back to the court, you just off in the free world, not reporting, not doing anything. And now you come to me and you want mercy from the court. I still don't understand why I should follow your proposed agreement. She has done nothing. What have you done? Now we need a fast talking attorney. Be with my kids. You shouldn't have even been with your children because here's the thing. You haven't done anything. This is what I ordered. Intensive parenting classes. Have you started parenting classes? Uh, no. Uh, I ordered felony drug court. I ordered Esperanza court. Have you reported to the UA hotline? No. Did you have employment? No. So you've done nothing. And somebody is allowing you to live with them obviously without employment. So what have you done? Nothing. So probation, why should I be following this? She hasn't done anything. Mm-hmm. This is not Burger King. Quite <laughs> have it their way. Um, I would say let's give her a chance to get evaluated in custody mm -hmm. and then see what their recommendations are. That's on the phone. Yeah, is she saying she wants help, Judge? Yeah. I, I think that's the state's what we're trying to do, Judge. All and, right. Your Honor, if I may add something yes. as well, um, I, I obviously wasn't counsel on the first go around, 
but my understanding speaking with Ms. Alonzo is um, her primary reason for not um, accepting time the first time around was the birth of her child. Uh, she's since given birth to that child, has been taking care of that child, um, finally recognizes that she needs help, um, albeit it sounds like, um, and my apologies on her behalf for making it seem like she's blaming the court. Um, I don't think that was her intention. I, I do think she is wanting and seeking help at this time. Um, one of the other offers was 18 months um, in jail, but she she chose the option of, she told me specifically that she wanted help and assistance now. I okay. This was the way for her I would like to know how she's taking care of child. Obviously, she has a drug problem, and she's trying to tell me that she hasn't been using drugs since she's been missing. I don't think that's true. She's not working, so she hasn't been financially supporting her child. And since she's using drugs, she hasn't been mentally there for her child. And your mom or who, who is the person who has custody of your child? Your mom? Yes. And your mom is allowing you to live with her? Yes. What's your mother's name? Viola. I'm sorry? Viola. Viola what? Vidal. Vidal? Is that V-I-D-A-L? All right, I'll deny the motion. Alter the main conditions. It's gonna to be to a referral to felony drug court in custody. And if she's not accepted, then she's going to safety. And that's in custody. And she is not allowed to reside with Viola Vidal. And there's to be no contact with minors until further notice. Whoa. Is there anything else? Oh, you're on. Anything no, you're on. else? Anything else you need? Probation? No contact, because I can tell you right now, Child Protective Services is involved and they don't know what's going on. Well, all my cases are closed. Well, I can't believe Child Protective Services is closing your cases and you're still. Yeah. See, this is what ends up happening with Child Protective Services cases. You have sometimes people will terminate, agree to terminate their rights, sign their rights over to their parents. But in all actuality, they're still the parent of the child because they're living there. And their moms just stepped up and did it because otherwise the baby was going to be with some unknown person. So, yes, no contact with minors until I say it's OK for minors. And if you want to end up having contact with minors, you, you had better start doing your parenting classes and doing all of that. Because on the CPS side, sounds to me you took the easy way out. Let me have these babies. Let me sign my rights over to my mom. And guess what? I don't have to do your parenting classes. I don't have to worry about drug testing. And my mom is going to let me have my children back. Not here. Not today. So that's the court's ruling. Is there anything else you need from the court to be successful? All right. We can go off the record. Here's in, in this court. And I know I, I've told you this before. In order to be successful, you need to stay in contact successful if there's an issue let us know if probation you feel they're not addressing it you can always come back to the court do you understand yes or no all right good luck to you wow. uh a more okay so uh that's all right come on down mr moore that's the one we wanted to watch i saw that, that was a spicy one thanks for keeping your eye on that one for me um Computer's really slow right now. Let's just go back to two here. We're going to pick up on the jury selection as it continues because they've just got uh, the last juror back from break. She's about to come have a seat. There we go. And <coughs> continue. Where Steven, we I think, did you want to tell me something? Yes, sir. I just need some clarification on mentioned a William Price. William Price. Yes, sir. Um, I know a Will Price. Okay. Sure. 
That's him. And yes, he works for a city's police department. So you would know him? Okay. Um, it's likely the state is going to call Mr. Price to the stand. Um, he's a city's police officer. If he were to be called to the stand, um, would that, would you maybe give him more credibility or less credibility given what type of relationship you have with him? More? Okay. If the judge instructs you that we treat all testimony the same, it sounds like that would be difficult if he were to be called to the stand. Then. Is that what you're saying? I would do what the judge asked. Sure. Um, so I guess what I want to know is, is that whatever relationship, you, how you know Mr. Price, it, would it be difficult or would you be able to set all that aside and, and weigh his credibility like you do every other witness? You could do that? Okay. He's hoping to get it for cause removal there because she knows one of the witnesses, one of the police officer witnesses. Right. So, Mr. Reader, I think we left off um, with the fact that you were saying that... She gave the right um, answer. She said she could set it aside and just... Would anyone require the state to put on a particular type of evidence? And I think you said yes, right? Okay. Um, so, what do you mean by that? And this is a case for disorderly conduct and resisting an officer without violence. Uh, okay. Thank you. Her amendments were violated. That way, something violated without being handled promptly, because there is proof of it that case. Okay. So, is that a So, you're, you're saying what type of evidence are you saying that you're wanting? Let's, let's, let's say I'll just use you for instance. Sure. Let's say that you get arrested for disorderly conduct because you're your ground for something that you know that you have done and it's correct. Uh, and you were wrongfully arrested, you were wrongfully convicted for something that So what you mentioned there is a standard grant, right? And at the end of the trial, you're going to get the instructions from the judge. And if that instruction says, hey, you can consider a standard grant issue, you could follow that. But what I'm looking more at is a particular type of evidence. So for example, like DNA or video surveillance. Yes, absolutely. Like video surveillance. Because okay. we're on the station. All the uh, officers dealing with the call, they, they are required to record, right? Okay. I'm sorry? All, all officials are required to record their traffic stops, any instances like that. Right? Okay. I don't know if all agencies, what their policy is. I'm not up to date on those. Um, but what I'm getting at is that um, you requiring the state to put on a particular type of evidence would be raising the state's burden from beyond an exclusion of every reasonable doubt to something higher. Do you understand that? So the state's burden is beyond and to the exclusion of every reasonable doubt. Can you hold the state to that standard? Okay. And it's okay if you can. I mean, if you know, that's what we're getting at here, right? you know. So if if the state didn't put on a particular type of evidence, you get back in that deliberation and say, look, man. State proved this case beyond a reasonable doubt, but they didn't give me any DNA evidence. You see what I'm getting at? Yeah, I see what you're okay. saying. I mean, if it's 100% clad proof that this is what happened, that would be okay. So you'd hold the state to its burden of beyond to the exclusion of every reasonable doubt, what you're saying. And you could do that. Yes. Okay. I haven't heard any updates on Mr. Farag up there in Thurston County. Kind of going back to what Ms. Stevens said, um, the state is going to call law enforcement um, as a witness, okay? Is there anybody here that would give someone that's in law enforcement more credibility, maybe because they have a badge and a gun, or less credibility? Uh, Mr. Reed. On the back. Yes. Um, uh, Actually, know quite a few law enforcement. I've heard a lot of them. Okay. State trooper, that is a preacher. Okay. Without a doubt, I would believe everything that comes out of that man's mouth, regardless of what anybody else says. So, yes, I could hold somebody else's opinion higher. Okay. We're talking about law enforcement. So, you're saying that if a law enforcement officer took the stand, you would give her or his testimony more credibility than someone else? Yes, especially the judge. Okay. So, the judge is going to instruct you. That we treat law enforcement testimony the same way we treat all other testimonies. Would you be able to follow that instruction? Yes. You could. Yes. Okay. You could set aside and These treat all testimonies the same, even when a law enforcement officer takes a stand. I believe a police officer's testimony over everyone Thank else's. You. And he says, the judge is going to tell you else? not to do that. He's like, okay, we'll follow the judge. 
For record, I don't see any. Kevin, is this in LA? What's the, where's that at? Um, I think Ms. Ayers, when we asked you the last question on the list, which was, um, can and will you be fair and impartial juror and base your decision solely upon the evidence and the law? And you said, I believe I could. Okay. Um, and Ms. Smith, I think you said you, you believe you could. Or yeah. I guess, right? Is that what you said? Yeah. Okay. Um, is there a reason why you think you're kind of in in team affairs? We're kind of you're kind of. I believe I could. I don't know what they say. You know, that you should know that you should know. Maybe somewhat like other people say you should know them all. Right. You do know Miss Wilkinson, right? I don't know her. Wilkinson. Like on a real personal level, but I. Do you think it would be difficult um, for you to listen to the testimony and evidence in this case because of how you know Ms. Ms. Wilkinson? No, I don't know her personally. You could, whatever that is, you could, it's not going to affect your ability to care for it. So you miss me. Any hesitation as to why you think, I guess you could be in Missouri? Well, like I said, you know, they're pretty much already sentenced so they get me. Okay. And I hear I'm innocent all day, so. So are you saying that um, given your employment, it's difficult for you to be fair and impartial? It would be, or no? Yes. Depends. Really All right, I'm gonna push back on you. Okay, let's. Uh, I'm gonna give you my my airplane hypothetical. Okay, uh, let's say you're gonna get on an airplane and uh, you're gonna go somewhere. Where do you want to go? Acapulco. Acapulco. Okay. You get there. You get on the plane. You get your seat, and the pilot comes on. And he says, "Problems taken off, but when we get to Acapulco, I think I can land this plane." <laughs> <laughs> so my first question is my first question is are you getting on that plane no you're not getting on that plane okay now what i want to know is if you're the pilot can you land that plane okay for for both the state and in the defense we want to know can you land the plane and what i mean by landing the plane is is can you render a verdict based on the law and the evidence yes okay thank you Okay, we're having fun Does with this. Here I'm going to see if I can bring on this police chase. Have strong really feelings either for or against law enforcement. Anybody? Record on scene. Okay. I'd like to go row by row, and I'll start with the back row, and I'll work my way over. I'd like to know if you or a close friend or family member have been accused of a crime. Okay. And what I mean by accused of a crime is that you had to appear before a judge, okay? And the close friend or family member, someone you would value their opinion, okay? So if you don't value their opinion, that's not the conversation I wanna talk with you about for that person, okay? So I'll start with the uh, back row. Have you or a close friend or family member been accused of a crime? Followed by law enforcement right yes. now. Ryan, who is that? We've got a quad in Miami. <laughs> running from the cops okay. and is that here in, it's a four-wheeler in jackson county yeah when was that uh, four years ago and do you feel like he was treated fairly by by law enforcement he was <clears throat> anything about um the incident with your son that would affect your ability to be fair and impartial in this case is that what he needs Anybody else on the back row? Yes, Mr. Reader. Yes, um, I was wrongfully arrested in Alabama for domestic violence in 2019. Okay. It's going to run out of gas. Um, do you feel like you were treated fairly by law enforcement? 
anything about that case that could affect your ability to be fair and impartial in this case? Uh, no, I'm sorry. Whatever happened in Dothan, you'd be able to set all that aside and be fair and impartial in this case. Okay. Anybody else on the last row? Mr. Bryant. He's going to run out of gas here, so. Your son? The case is currently pending. Is it Jackson County? No. No. Where, where, where is that at? Bay County? And what are the nature of the allegations? Um, he's passing. Oh, my goodness. Domestic? He's, he's doing over 60 miles an hour. He's passing cars on the freeway on a quad. Um, I know the case is pending, but up till this point, do you feel like he's been treated fairly by law enforcement? Anything about that case that would affect your ability to be fair and impartial in this case? Thank you. Okay, I'm gonna go to the second row. Anybody in the second row? Yes, Mr. Simmons. So my father has spent 16 years. My father has spent 16 years in prison. That was 30 years ago. 30 years ago? The chase is um, down in Miami. What were the nature of? I want to say, I mean, I was 12. I don't really know. So it was, uh, yes, possibly by kidnapping him and his wife had something to go So it was, it was a high speed chase that crossed him out. Oh, high speed chase. Like I said, he's, he's just my biological father. He's never worked shit for Okay. So I don't know how it shook out. You know, he spent time. Okay. Anything about that that would affect your ability to be fair and impartial? Thank you. Anybody else on the second row? What is that? What kind of bike is that? Is that a warrior? And is that... the front row. Anybody on the front? Looks like it's got a Y on it. Is it a Yamaha? <laughs> <laughs> um, so who, who is it? Uh, we'll start with me. Okay. Uh, Mr. Simmons, I'm going to be honest with you. I think we didn't have trouble so a lot. Started when he was younger and uh, same similar drugs recently. <laughs> and I don't think they're straight enough. Yeah. The drug laws? Punch. Punch. Not the laws. <laughs> yeah, if, if that gets in an accident, that kid your case, has that no that protection. Other than the helmet. Anything about, uh, well, let me ask you this. Do you feel like you were treated fairly well? Anything about that case that would affect your ability to be fair and partial? And then I think you said it was your father as far as the drug case. Were those local here in Jackson? In uh, one county area of Washington. Okay. And roughly, what, what time frame is that? You're all the way to five, six, six, seven. Anything else? On the still on the first row, go ahead. A lot of my family's been in and out of jail, but I'm homeless domestic, some of them have drugs. I have one uncle that uh, was in prison for a few years ago. I don't see any police behind him. Are they keeping their distance? I know there was all kinds of stuff involved. Chase is in Florida, Miami, um, not Florida. Not a case here, of course, but would any of that affect your ability? Whatever, no, not affect your ability to turn a parcel in this case, correct? All right, moving, continue on the, on the front row. Douglas? Yes, sir. I was uh, falsely accused of uh, domestic violence with a minor child and, uh, that about, I think, two years ago. Okay. But I was treated fairly by law enforcement, but the whole process, you're almost guilty. You got kind of got to prove your innocence, but... I'm all about like the evidence, the facts and evidence. Okay, that's all. I'm all, all about that. Sure. I'm all about so this was a, a BDE case. Uh, was it local here in Jackson County? Yes, sir. Okay. It's an attempt to keep me from my kids. <laughs> but, um, okay. Well, when did you say when about that was? Probably about two years ago. Two years ago. Back right there. So. Yeah. Anything about um, well. You said you're fair. I was treated fairly by law enforcement, but the whole process is like they got to protect the women and the kids. So they're going to keep you from your kids <laughs> and uh, take your firearms. So, uh, same same that. question. Anything about that that would affect your ability to turn a party? It's not, but I'm just like to just have the evidence and the facts. That's all I'm all about. Anybody else again on the front row? All right. Yes, Mr. 
Is it Keys? No. That's Mr. Hannon. Yeah. Wow. Well, mayor, June last year, I got arrested for driving on a suspended license only. Okay. It's everybody been and arrested in this courtroom? It got flipped over to be an only. But yes, it could be impartial. Okay. You feel like you were treated fairly on that driving case? At the beginning, not really, but at the end, yes. At the end, yes. Yeah. And um, you said that was, of course, here in Jackson County? Yep. Yeah. Thank you very much. Anybody else on? Yes, Ms. Bramble. Did you say close friends as well as? Sure. Anyone that's a close friend, and again, you know, they, they might be a close friend, but if you don't value their opinion, that's not someone that is. But if you would value their opinion, yes. Okay. Who? Uh, the person's name. Yeah. Or how, how are they related to you? Or how do you know? Close friend. Close friend. Okay. Yes. And what were they uh, accused of? Sexual molestation. Okay. But yes. Yes, he was treated fairly. And anything about that that would affect your ability to be fair and impartial in this case if you were selected? Oh, man. Anybody else? Nope. Okay. I'm going to wrap up here, getting close. Um, this uh, case is scheduled for Wednesday. Is there anybody here that has anything going on in their lives that would um, cause a conflict with, with Wednesday? That's inventory of my job. Mandatory inventory. Mandatory inventory. inventory. I've been there. Thank you. Anybody else? Show of hands. For the record, I don't see any other conflict. Okay. All right. There's a there's a division of responsibilities that I want to talk about. Okay. Uh, like we like I've said before, your job as a juror is to render a verdict in this case. Okay. Now, that is either guilty or not guilty based on the law you get from the judge and the evidence you hear in this trial. Okay. It is the judge's job if the defendant is found guilty to impose a sentence. Okay. But there's a division of those responsibilities. You as a juror are not to consider, you know, consider yourself with what would happen if the defendant is found guilty. Can everyone separate those? Everyone separate those jobs? Okay. No, this is this is not a street legal vehicle. Looks like you might be um, moving over to take an exit. Just please cut, let me know if you right, disagree with right. this. Yes, he did. Adults are responsible Gunned for their it. actions wow. and should be held accountable. Anybody disagree with that? The record I don't see. Tender the panel judgment. Oh, thank you, Mr. Gill. Mr. Axon, I see that Mr. Kerry Axon has stepped in. Is he going to play a role in, in the case, possibly? I just want to introduce you to the jury, if that's the case. Ladies and gentlemen, I, we introduced you to the attorneys earlier. This is Mr. Kerry Axon. He's another attorney that may or may not play a role in the case. So if you know him, when the questions I ask about, if you know any of the people in the court, any of you know Mr. Kerry Axon. All right, Mr. West Axon, whenever you're ready, sir. Ms. Bramer, Mr. Gill, Your Honor, may it please the court. Good morning, potential jurors. My name is Wes Atkinson. Um, I do represent Mrs. Jackie Wilkinson on this case. Um, this case moving. As the state has stated, she has been charged with um, disorderly conduct and resisting arrest without violence. Okay. Um, I know the state went into the purposes of jury selection, and I just want to expound on that a little bit. We're here today on what's called void deer or if you're a little country, you may call it void dire, okay? Um, which essentially is a term in Latin that means speak the truth, okay? And that's exactly what we want you to do here today. Because if y'all can't speak the truth to us, we cannot figure out whether or not you will be a good selection. You guys want to hear church, the police okay? chase audio here So I'm going to ask you some questions that may I'm you gonna, know, make I'm you feel uncomfortable, as Mr. Gill stated. And if I do, just then, of course, you know, you can, we can always do a sidebar as previously mentioned. Um, in this chase, so he's, he's free of law enforcement right now. Uh, is that simply because he crossed county lines or is there another reason you may know of? Ooh, flips a UE. Uh, that, well, you see the trooper right, right there. There's, yeah. yeah, there's a trooper to answer your question right there. He is behind him and uh, the, these guys, uh, the troopers especially, uh, have uh, extensive training on, uh, on this uh, police following uh, the pursuit. And the pit maneuver, which uh, I'm sure just about everybody's uh, familiar with. You got the chopper off the left there, bud. 
Yeah, good man. Good man. Wow. All right, just got to check in with our pilot. Uh, pilot like you're getting Mark really Lewis close here to make the, sure he sees the other chopper. aircrafts that are involved here. But well, we do have some trees out the down below there that are blocking a little bit of our view. But uh, the speedometer there pretty accurate now as far as uh, how fast uh, uh, this uh, this person on the uh, ATV is going. And again, uh, a better part of an hour now coming up that. Uh, uh, police have been following him now uh, predominantly uh, was uh, from the air, uh, an aviation unit helicopter from Miami-Dade police following and now we have the uh, Florida Highway Patrol bring the camera out here one more time, see where they are and that there he's about uh, a half a block behind. Let me center the picture up there for you. This time we are now eastbound on Sterling Road coming back across the railroad tracks getting back, uh, closer to I-95. So. I guess he's going to roll the dice here and see which way he goes on the highway, or maybe go, maybe go through here. Let's see what happens. Hold on. Go back under the underpass. Yeah, he's come, coming up on some traffic, so he's going to have the upper hand as far as uh, wheeling through and around traffic with that ATV. He'd go off road there, right there. He goes on cue and around those uh, uh, vehicles that are stopped at the intersection there, and he goes underneath I-95. So he's going to continue going eastbound, Mark. For now, let's see if he turns and goes northbound. Waiting here, see if he comes out on the other side. Did you lose him under the underpass? Come on. There he goes, oh, and he is going northbound, Mark. All right, folks, we're going to uh, continue to follow this uh, vehicle as it goes northbound here. The ATV that's been being followed by the police department, several agencies involved over the course of this uh, pursuit. And uh, we're coming up to the uh, airport at uh, Fort Lauderdale. And this is going to be a little tricky for us because uh, we're, we'll be the flying airspace. or be asked to fly right over the end of their runway there. And it is a busy airport. So if they give us permission, we're going to continue to follow this vehicle northbound on the eye. And if not, we'll do our best to uh, uh, circle around and uh, continue to provide you with these pictures. I'm going to be off the radio here for a second. So I will throw it back to you as we uh, just cross. We're coming up on Griffin Road at I-95 northbound. All right, Ralph Rayburn, thank you for that. Again, if you are just joining us right now, you're looking at live pictures of an ATV rider who is running from police and has been running from police on this ATV for close to an hour now. As we've been mentioning, this started in Opelika, went through the streets of Miami, got onto I-95, and this driver no is now back on I-95, heading northbound. He got off on Sterling Road, uh, went westbound for a little bit, made a U-turn, went eastbound, and just jumped right back back on to I-95, uh, Florida Highway Patrol right behind him. You see it on the right side of your screen, that corner there, that FHP trooper is behind him. Because he went from Miami Day to Broward County, there was a moment, Ethan, where he had no one behind him, but What's guess up? what? Eyes have been from up above on this rider from the very beginning. Miami Dade police in a chopper What's keeping a very close eye on this rider, and so have we. And at this stage of the pursuit, Alex, of course, uh, law enforcement, uh, FHP troopers there, just trying to keep everyone this safe. Intense. That's the an main concern like right now. And of course, this is an extremely dangerous situation because this rider, as we've been watching, is weaving in and out of uh, all traffic, but even going in between semi trucks, large semi trucks here. Uh, so just a dangerous situation all around. It's something other drivers obviously want to avoid and, and uh, troopers want to avoid making this an even more dangerous situation. So mess. that's why you're seeing them uh, back off a bit. We saw that earlier. Uh, now they're that you can see them following a little more closely at this point, uh, hoping turning to see right, this come to right. an end, obviously very soon. But and no indication that right. that's going to happen uh, right now as he got him. back on 95, as you pointed out, Alex. And you see him right there. And as we've been mentioning, either he stops he quits or he runs out of gas and uh, he's been at this for about an hour now so not sure exactly how ATVs work not sure how much gas these guys have but um, but we're talking about a lengthy ride and what I would call a lengthy ride for an ATV and what what appears to be a full gas tank yeah from the every indication uh, yeah, as we stay with these live pictures from seven sky force Ralph Raven following along right along with us uh, we do want to oh keep you posted yeah. and and update you he's Ralph do you have anything new? North, he's going north straight up. I, I, hi, guys. I, I was uh, talking with the pilot there, Mark Lewis. Uh, uh, ready to go. All right. As, as Ralph stays with this and tries to get his bearings up there, too, uh, we want to just update you where this started. This is all the way back in Opalaka, uh, weaving its way through Miami Gardens Drive, uh, going through the hospital district in Miami near JMH, uh, eventually hello, hello. ending up across the county Over line on 95 in the express lanes. 
Hello, uh, right off of 441 into Hollywood, then west on Sterling Road, making a U-turn, going back east and hopping right back on to northbound I-95. Yes, I can. What we're seeing now. Yes, hello, hello. And hello, hello. Yes, Ralph. Hi, guys. I, I wasn't sure if you could hear me or Sorry. not. Uh, we're just doing an audio check with uh, one of our audio folks upstairs there. Uh, I want to tell you that, we're, let me see what the uh, my Churchill map says as the, uh, as the uh, driver here continues uh, to uh, evade police. That's Davy Boulevard. Yes, okay, Davy Boulevard. And he's now getting uh, making a U-turn and coming back southbound. He's getting back on the I going southbound, Mark. It's All right, so you got to turn and go territory. south when you can. He's followed by a Florida Highway Patrol vehicle here. Uh, that got hung up in traffic a little bit there. Uh, he's trying to make a determination. Right. He slowed down here, and now he's making a U-turn right there because he can, and he's going to be going back northbound again. You see him uh, make that uh, very, very dangerous Wrong turn way. there Wrong into way. oncoming traffic. He is now he's still in the uh, southbound lanes of I-95. Look at this. This is insane. Uh, as he goes uh, northbound in the breakdown lane here of the southbound, uh, yeah, the southbound lanes of the roadway here, that ATV allowing him that... Uh, luxury of making those uh, turns off of the He's main roadway there because of the suspension on so it. He's able to go up, go up over curves and stuff, but uh, he is, uh, looks like he may be running out of gas. Actually, I cannot tell. He's looking to cross over the roadway. Look, check that out. And he's now, now he's on the, uh, on the uh, inside lane of the breakdown and he's, uh, Wow. It's a very dangerous uh, situation. I'm sorry. I'm just getting a little tongue-tied here. I, All right. He's uh, made another U-turn, and he's now done a 360 right there in the middle of the roadway. It appears that he's waiting for a break in the traffic so that he can either cross this roadway, a busy I-95. Let's bring the camera back out here. And either that or he's going to whip a, a right-hand turn here and join that traffic continue, and continue uh, uh, so southbound. Uh, nice. Right now, the traffic, as you see, crossing from right screen to the left. That is the southbound traffic of I-95, and that's what he's doing now. He's spun out a, a little bit, and he's crossing over to the other side. He's uh, now in the uh, middle, and he's rolled it over there. Hang on. He turned it over on one side. Looks like he's having some issues. Yeah, he might have a flat tire. I don't know. Uh, he's going to try to start it up again if it hasn't stalled. Yeah, he's giving Looks it like some gas stalled, there. Nope. So he does, it is running. Yep. He is running and he is going southbound along one of the little barrier interior barrier walls of I-95 going the wrong way against traffic. He's traveling northbound. All those cars are traveling southbound, the ones that are in the same lane that he is right now. I'm not 100% sure where the Florida Highway Patrol officer is in all this because obviously he's got a much bigger vehicle and a lot of heavier presence in the area to deal with. But right now, other than... Uh, these uh, our news helicopter and uh, so several others. Uh, that's the only thing that we know that uh, is following him. We have not seen the Broward Sheriff's Office helicopter yet, trying to establish whether or not he's there. I have not seen there. He co okay, he popped out from underneath there. I'll give you a cross street here in just one second. I believe it's going to be sunrise. Yeah, there's uh, downtown Fort Lauderdale right there. So uh, I'm sorry, Broward Boulevard. Make that Broward Boulevard where we are right now. So uh, the crossing over there. Going northbound in the, uh, it's hard to remember that, but it's northbound in the southbound lanes. You can see all the traffic there on I-95 coming southbound, but he's in that uh, HOV lane there, the breakdown lane of the HOV as he crosses over Broward Boulevard, continues northbound. And again, to to refresh uh, for anybody who might just be tuning, tuning in, uh, he's running down the lane here, back in Opelaka earlier today, this guy on the ATV wearing all black with a black mask and a black helmet, uh, was driving erratically and racing around. Uh, police officers spotted him and uh, tried to get him to stop. They would, he would not stop. Uh, they followed at a distance for a while. They finally got a, an aviation unit from the county up down there and off 135th Street in the area of 7th Avenue. Uh, he located the aviation unit, located the, uh, the vehicle, the ATV and the driver and followed it for quite a while calling out the locations uh, to the ground units that followed in parallel. There you go, you see the trooper going, zooming by there, trying to, to get ahead now right there and uh, probably uh, uh, initiate some kind of a stop. So anyway, he continued uh, all in that area off of I-95 and uh, around 135th Street and it went all the way up uh, uh, to the Golden Glades area and east there, all the way over to Northeast 6th Avenue there for a while, got back on the I, yes, ended so up on space. 7th Avenue. Uh, around uh, 95th Street and went south on 7th Avenue all the way to the uh, Jackson Memorial Ho uh, Hospital complex down there off of 12th and 10th, Street, uh, 10th Avenue uh, and 12th Street and all in that area around there where the big uh, construction project is for the 836 
uh, making it difficult for ground units and AV, the aviation unit to keep a, keep track of this guy. Uh, then he finally got off of those roadways and ended up back on I-95, and he has been on and off uh, I-95 here, up at, got off at Sterling Road for a little while. And at the current time, as you see those cars speeding by, whipping by there, uh, probably a sight to, for them to see uh, somebody on an ATV going the wrong way in traffic. At this okay, let me let me turn him down just for a minute. He has so little space, and it keeps if all it takes is one car to be a little wide in their lane, and and he could get clipped or pinched going. He's going what sixty miles an hour northbound. The cars coming towards him are going 60, 70, 80 miles an hour southbound. Uh, that combined is a huge one hundred and forty mile per hour impact, which is not survivable on an ATV like this. 95 yep. rather than in a vehicle. Uh, and that, again, puts him at an advantage over law enforcement trying to pursue him right now. Oh and here he goes gosh. back into the main lanes, uh, right. appearing to make a U-turn now and head in the same direction as sure. he's, he's He is doing that. And uh, again, I think the, uh, I think the, the bottom he's line on all this is the fuel. Soon. When he runs out of fuel, he's going to be done. There's not going to be able to go much, you know, farther. I don't know how much. Nobody knows how much fuel the guy's got. I, I don't and, uh, personally know the he's range of the uh, these kind of vehicles and how far they can go. But uh, there are uh, folks following uh, the vehicle. Uh, Florida Highway Patrol uh, got involved there when uh, the vehicle crossed the uh, county line there on I-95, and uh, he now working his way south here. Uh, I'm looking. Uh, uh, to pick up the a location here for you guys but again in the uh breakdown lane at high rate of speed passing uh, slower traffic there on the eye uh be coming up to an exit here in just a second let's see if i can pick up what that is there as he uh yeah whips off and whips exit. around the uh, slower traffic there highway to speed dangerous conditions and uh and not too many good choices being made right now intersection okay so ralph we, ethan and i were just talking he's right. going south on the southbound lanes right he's done several u-turns but can you confirm that for us well at this point now he's making a right on to west sunrise okay. boulevard west sunrise boulevard there okay. you go yeah that's sunrise boulevard right there and he is west of the eye now uh with slower traffic here uh, adjusting his uh driving habits uh somewhat but again still trying to flee from the police uh, for uh, wanted at this point for reckless driving from from, from fleeing from the, the police, sidewalks. excessive speed, uh, dangerous driving there, uh, that a, a, a litany of uh, things that he's uh, uh, looking at right now. And you oh. see a police officer there in an unmarked car, flashing lights there, attempting to block his pathway, but he continues west on Sunrise Boulevard. You good, Mark? Mark, you good? Mark, are you good? Okay, thank you. I'm just checking with our pilot here because he's a uh, chatting away with uh, the other pilots that are up here in the area and uh, air traffic control just want to make sure everything is copacetic across the board as we continue Mark, to follow this vehicle here westbound on Sunrise Boulevard west of I-95. Safety first for Ralph and Mark up above in Seven Sky Force for the officers in their chopper and for the drivers here dealing with this mess. Uh, this ATV rider KFC now making a ride right into, into a KFC. Into a KFC, everybody. Again, this is West Sunrise Boulevard. He was uh, west of I-95 and now deciding to get out of that parking lot and on a sidewalk right here as traffic is going so quickly right next to him. This ATV rider, Ethan, has uh, is relentless. And Alex, we do want to point out this is now Northwest 31st Avenue, I believe, crossing over 11th Street. Uh, is still going west, I think. Well, he turned northbound. northbound. He turned northbound. Thank you. Yeah, Thank yeah. you, Ralph. He's northbound. He looks now, back right? I have a little compass I can throw up there, but the uh, screen gets so confusing with all the little toys that we have to show you that we're just going to keep the speedometer up on that upper right hand corner out of the way for now. Okay, well, I did a Google search if this helps any uh, ATV, a uh, full tank of gas can get you between 90 to 100 miles. Okay, that's helpful. I don't know, of course, the make and model of this ATV. Um, I don't know the distance so far, but we're talking about a pursuit that has uh, been going for about an hour. He can't stop uh, and, and get he gas. is going uh, pretty quickly. Which so. is longer than a lot caught. of the pursuits we watch with Correct. regular uh, passenger vehicles. And I think it's because of what you said, because of his agility, because he's able to swerve um, and go into areas that the normal vehicle can't. Uh, the uh, FHP trooper behind him 
couldn't. We haven't seen that trooper in quite some time. No, we have not. Or is he there? Ralph is uh, probably going to be able to tell us better. Uh, Ralph, can you put eyes on, on FHP at the moment? Uh, uh, what we're trying to do here is just uh, stay clear of, uh, of Ralph's the really ground. worried about the other units. Wait one second. Hold on. I'm just getting some information here. Yeah, we, we pulled the camera back out there about two blocks. We do not see the uh, any marked units now, but there is a, 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 a group that's part of It's either part of a task force or it's a, a currently running program that they're using uh, in Broward County that involves uh, undercover police officers. It's hard to know if it's stolen or not. So yes, we're going to be on the lookout for those. Uh, vehicles in the area there, but uh, again, the ATV driver here uh, just pretty much uh, on cruise control right now continues to look over his left and right shoulders, looking back to see if there's anybody that he can spot that's keeping uh, uh, up with him. And there you have that SUV from earlier. Uh, there there's appears to be at least right one. Uh, I see the flashing lights there. We got a second one, I believe, pulling up right here, too. And he's pulling over to the side, and it looks like he's about to give up the ghost here. Let's yeah. uh, use a zoom here, and we're going to get a little bit closer. Officer is getting him to stop. They're going to knock him to the ground and uh, secure him and make sure that he's not carrying any weapons. Uh, uh, several Broward Sheriff's Office uh, representatives there now have taken this person down. Looks like he probably ran out of fuel or finally just decided the wiser thing to do is to give himself up. So he is in police custody. You watch this pretty much unfold here live. Wow. Uh, from uh, Dade to Broward, or from Dade to uh, uh, to the city of Miami and uh, that area down uh, around the Jackson Memorial Complex in the court area, back on I-95 north uh, into the North Miami area, North Miami Beach, all the way up through I-95 and Ives Dairy Road and then across county line where the county, Dade County, uh, turned it over to Broward Sheriff's Office. Broward Sheriff's Office followed for a while. Take the guy got off I-95 at Sterling, uh, U-turns back, uh, back northbound, then driving in the wrong uh, lanes of traffic uh, going northbound in the southbound lanes. Uh, Florida High Patrol got involved at that point uh, just as they crossed uh, into, Broward, uh, into Broward County. And uh, just a moment ago, you watched him pull off the side of the road very unceremoniously and uh, was taken into custody here. Uh, got his that's what I got for now. you. Back to you guys. Ralph, one more time for viewers, a locator for this. What street is this on? Just so we can uh, know where on this one came from. second here. Let me, uh, yeah. I'm going to have to uh, correct the uh, uh, Looks like GPS a, here. One a second. Warrior? Here you're going to see it says, not, uh, sure. what is that, uh, 31st, 31st Avenue. Avenue. And I'll, I'll pan off here just for a second and find you the next closest cross street here, which is going to be Northwest 30th Place. And this is uh, Fort Lauderdale, Oakland Park Zimia, area. Saw it. You dropped Thank the F-bomb. We don't do that. Okay. okay, well, a long pursuit that we have watched. That's and all. an unusual one, Welcome back. An unusual one well, as well. Feelings. As you look at video uh, recorded from Seven Sky. Okay, so, uh, so that was good fun. Let's go back to our... <laughs> Let's go back to our trial that we're watching. To answer the uh, questions truthfully, okay? Does anybody have a problem doing that? Oops. Oh man, I just we just lost we just lost a ton. Where were we? Where were we? Potential jurors are present and back in the jury box. Mr. Gill, would you like to proceed? Thank you, Judge. That's yes. where we came back from lunch. That was forty six. Then the other dude got up. So is that here? Did you say close friends as well as? Sure. We were. Okay, here we are. As the state has stated, she has been charged with um, disorderly conduct and resisting arrest without violence. Okay. Um, I know the state went into the purposes of jury selection, and I just want to expound on that a little bit. We're here today on what's called boy deer, or if you're a little country, you may call it boy dire, okay? Um, which essentially is a term in Latin that means speak the truth, okay? And that's exactly what we want you to do here today. Because if y'all can't speak the truth to us, we cannot figure out whether or not you will be a good selection for this jury, okay? So I may ask you some questions that may, you know, make you feel uncomfortable, as Mr. Gill stated. And if I do, then of course, you know, you can, we can always do a sidebar as previously mentioned, um, I but I encourage you to answer the questions truthfully. Okay. Does anybody have a problem doing that? No? Okay. All right. Still so have set up on the side of the she's road. been charged with these, these crimes, alleged crimes, uh, through information. Does anybody know what information is? Basically that's just the charging document. Okay. Um, does anybody know anything about this case? Any particulars, facts? 
No hands. Not seeing any. Okay. And we've already went through the witnesses. Nobody knows anybody named Sandra Vickers, Kayla Vickers, James Suggs, Lenny Pearlmill, Officer William Price, other than Mrs. Stevenson, and Roger Wilkinson. Is it James Suggs? James Suggs, yes, sir. Is that a principal, Mr. Suggs? Is that the same? I don't know, sir. Okay. I don't believe so. I don't so. I'm glad you said that, though, because now I know you're telling the truth. <laughs> okay. So, and we've already said that Mrs. Ayers, um, everybody's been butchering your name today, but you stated that you think you may know Mrs. Wilkinson, but you don't know. It's just basically in passing. Is that correct? Arizona trial doesn't happen on Mondays. We'll start she, again tomorrow. She did your hair one time? Okay. Okay. 20 years ago okay all right but not something that's you know okay all right then. as the state has as uh as mr gill has stated um the state does have the burden of proof and that burden is beyond reasonable doubt okay and he also mentioned that he's going to put the state through their through their burden essentially um and the reason they do that is because we don't have to do anything as the defendant, okay, as the as the attorney for the defendant, the state has the burden in order to prove every single element of their case. So if they do that and we don't put in on any evidence, would that sway anybody's opinion whatsoever as far as trying to, and I think someone mentioned, disprove their guilt? Would anybody have any issues with that? No? Mr. Bryan. I think that, and I heard six kids also, but you said here you have two. Is that correct? Two marriage, I have four additional. Oh, okay. I got you. I got you. All right. <laughs> and you said that you, we, I know that Mr. Gill made an example about cookies. Mm -hmm. and, and you said, okay, one child may be the culprit because you know their personality and who they are. Is that correct? Right. Okay. But if that child, after looking at the evidence, had no cookies on their hands, no cookies on their face, and said, I didn't do it. And then you looked at your other child, and they have cookies smeared all over the place and cookies all over their hands and wiping stuff off, then you can deduct by implication that exactly. Okay. So, with that kind of, even though you may know that person's personality, well, that's why your opinion about who you take the cookies. Okay. All right. By show of hands, does anybody have a DNA machine at home? Does anybody have an Intoxilizer 5000 at home? No? I got okay. the, the upgraded, the 6500. So given that the state has these in their possession and, and is required to use them, whenever they're trying to prove their case, that gives them the burden, okay? Let me, let me ask you the sidebar. It's like, okay. This is a little trial. The, the woman who's sitting almost in the middle of the screen, just above the, where the four corners connect, she's the defendant. I think she's charged with just some small crimes. Will she get to go up there to sidebar too? Nice. Um, she's charged with uh, something like uh, resistant arrest without violence and disorderly conduct. Okay, so it's it's not the end of the world. This is not a, a capital case by any means, um, which is probably one of the reasons why we, we get to see the jury here. But the word is deduce, not... What did he, what did he say? Deduct? You sold your machines last week? Man, they're good machines, too. <coughs> Congrats. Distraction whenever you're ready, sir. Okay. I apologize. I'd like to clarify that they, like as stated before, they don't have to have any particular type of evidence in order to prove their case. Okay. But the burden does rest on them. And if they use whatever evidence or lack of evidence thereof, that is the law totally bit. up to them. Okay. But there is nothing required for them to do in order to prove their case, any particular type of evidence. Okay. Um, <clears throat>
That means uh, you've hit the six month However, mark. As we stated before, Mr. Brian, if there was somebody who has cookie on their face, then we can follow that by implication to say they're either guilty or not guilty of eating cookies, correct? Okay. What if I just smeared the cookie on my face and didn't eat Mrs. it? Mrs. Baxter, I know that you're kind of the popular person around here. You seem to know everybody. <laughs> uh, almost. Okay. Well, by show of hands, is there anybody who knows Miss Baxter or knows anybody who would put, if she was to make it on the jury with y'all, who would put her um, opinion in higher esteem than anybody else concerning the verdict? No? Okay. So as far as if she votes one way, that doesn't particularly mean that I'm going to vote the same way Ms. Baxter is because I like Ms. Baxter. No. Ms. Smith, you said that you work for the DOC. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. And you said that you've already, they get to you and they've already been sentenced. Yes. And you watch a lot of 48 hours. Yes. Okay. And so in those 48 hours, you they show things on there that's kind of like, I think that you mentioned, they have photos, uh -huh. guns, DNA evidence, and videos, correct? Okay. And so a lack of evidence tends to fall in the opposite direction, correct? Yeah. So if there is no photos, if there is no guns, if there is no DNA and there is no videos, then do you have a tendency to believe that that person might be guilty? No. Okay. Does anybody think that? All right. <clears throat> Mr. Douglas, I believe that you mentioned earlier that you had been falsely accused of, I guess, some sort of domestic something or another they, in order to get you away from your kids. Is that correct? Okay. So you would agree that there's times where people may use the process in a manner that's inconsistent with the way the law was supposed to be used. Is that correct? Okay. The fact that that happened to you, do you believe that that would be reason for you to find someone guilty or not guilty? No. So you can put that aside. Yes. Okay. All right. Next question. What do you know about jury <clears throat> nullification? I'm just kidding. The judge would flip. <laughs> Mr. Reader, you say you work at Hibbets. Okay. Does that mean that you're, Somewhat an athlete? No. No? <laughs> you just work there. You see a lot of athletes, though, right? I just run the store, that's all. You just run the store. Yeah. Okay. Now, do you ever watch any football? Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. Have you ever seen anybody running down the field and just get totally blindsided? Okay. Why do you think that is? They weren't paying attention. They got – have you ever heard of the term tunnel vision? Mm -hmm. you, all right. Can you explain to me what tunnel vision is? So, one path direction – and you're not paying attention to anything else that's going on around you. And so you get smacked. I used to play football. I used to, the only time that really has ever happened to me, I got the wind knocked out of me and I couldn't breathe for like a whole minute, you know, but it, it and it does happen. And the reason that it Touch happened relevance. was because it was my fault. I, like you said, I got the tunnel vision and I got knocked out. So there was consequences of that, but I never got knocked out again. After that happened, I was able to keep my head on a swivel. And, and I just want you to understand that does anybody have a question about what that means, what tunnel vision is, or get you get so it. locked in on something that you lose sight of the important things. No? <clears throat> I know the state talked about types of evidence earlier and, and I won't expound upon that anymore, but <clears throat> He talked also about what's re what is reasonable doubt. And he read you the definition. I'm not going to disagree with that. That is the definition of reasonable doubt. But I do want to talk to you about some things that might cause reasonable doubt. Okay? There's really three things, and I believe that you'll find this in the jury instruction as well. Number one, uh, the evidence itself. And number two, a lack of evidence. And number three, a conflict of evidence. Okay? What we were talking about earlier, the evidence itself. It's pretty simple. Someone says a crime has been committed. If you weigh that person's credibility and you find them to be credible, then you believe that crime has been committed. It's the direct evidence. Number two, lack of evidence. We talked about DNA evidence earlier. Um, if they had an opportunity to, to, uh, to 
go and dust for fingerprints and then they found fingerprints or didn't find fingerprints, then you may not believe that this person could be guilty of a crime. Is that correct? Does anybody disagree with that? Okay. Conflict of evidence. If they go and dust for fingerprints and they find fingerprints, but it doesn't lead back to the defendant. Do you believe that that's a verdict of not guilty or guilty? Does anybody have any problems with that? No. Nope. Okay. Sure Has anybody enough. ever heard the term where there's smoke, there's fire? By show of hands. Okay. Mrs. Whitten, what does that mean? It looks like that. It looks like that. Okay. <laughs> and I believe the judge is going to tell you that um, if there is reasonable doubt, then you must find Mrs. Wilkinson not guilty, no matter how much speculation there may be that she is guilty. Okay. So this so is one of those situations where fire. you have to see the fire itself. You can't just by mere speculation believe somebody is guilty. Is that correct? Okay. Does anybody disagree with that? She turned me into a noob. We got better. The front row. Mr. Right. Davenport, you said you was a teacher. Okay. And, and uh, I believe the state um, kind of allowed you to expand upon what you believe disorderly conduct was. Can you tell me a little bit more about that? I just, I'm kind of curious. You said, Two people when there's can you tell me about that again? Well, just anybody that doesn't follow rules and acts out. So any sort of acting out and anything. Okay. What about if somebody sticks a gun gun underneath the table? Is that something that yeah, you know, that's not following the rules and uh, threatens the safety of everyone else in the room. Putting gum underneath someone's table is threatening safety. Well, I'm thinking desk when you said table. Oh, okay, desk, table, yeah. Okay. So do you, do you think that that's threatening people's safety? Yeah, it depends on the situation. Did he say gun or yeah, gum? As a classroom teacher, a gun is a threat. Right. No matter what situation it is. Right. Yeah. Okay. Well, do, well would, you, would you classify it more as a mere annoyance, or would you classify that as a threat? Thank you. Thank Go you. ahead. Yeah. Gum, gum, oh, gum. gum. Yeah, I'm sorry. I, I, I need to clarify. He's like, no wonder this answer to I was a high school manager, so I'm a little bit deaf. Okay. Uh, is, is gum? No, doesn't gum would not be this problem. Okay. So you would find that to be more of a mere annoyance than, say, whereas a gun would be a, a, a threat. Yes. Okay. Yeah. All right. <laughs> bubble gum, bubble gum, okay? I would not be so I understood. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I am too. I am too. Oh, is serious. Yeah. Does anybody think that sticking bubble gum underneath the table would be considered disorderly conduct? Or do you find that to be more of a mere annoyance? Pregnant pause. Long wait. Silence. No one's. No one's. Does anybody here. believe? And I think Miss Miss uh, Smith, you may have mentioned this earlier, but I just want to clarify. Does anybody believe that because someone has been charged with a crime, they are automatically guilty? Does anybody believe that? Do you believe that? No. No. Okay. And I know you said that earlier. They're they they come to me. They're already been sentenced. Already been sentenced. That's right. All right. <laughs> We're watching how a jury gets selected for a trial, and it's a rare situation where we get to view this. Mr. Hernandez, you said that you had uh, recently gotten a driving while license suspended. And what I meant in the first part is the cop didn't want to, I know they got a job to do and everything else, but he didn't want to give me a chance to explain my situation. He just went bam, bam, that was it. Okay. And at the end, when I came to court, I explained and went through that. That's when the parents came in, they were able to actually give a second and look at it and make the right judgment call. Okay. Right. At first, it was bam, bam, see it. Okay. The cop not saying he was wrong, not saying he pressured, 
as you can see, didn't want to take the time and listen. Okay. So you would agree that courts where you kind of get your chance to explain something, correct? Yeah. Okay. In a sense, yeah. Okay. So you may not have been treated fairly at the first I didn't time. I say it wasn't totally unfair. Mm -hmm. You just have was on that borderline. Okay. You just didn't have a chance to explain. Is that correct? That's correct. Okay. Mrs. Bramley, you said you was a librarian before and a teacher before you retired. So you must have a deep love for books and, and knowledge and everything like that. Is that correct? And children. Yeah, of course. That's what you gotta have. You know, I have one I have a four year old son. Uh the other day he told me that gremlins came into the house and stole all of the Easter candy. You got it? <laughs> I didn't have any evidence to the contrary of that. So it could have happened. Okay. Um, but you agree that, and I know that the state may have talked about uh, some of our, well, actually, I believe that it was Mr. Reader who mentioned that we have fundamental rights. Does everybody agree with that? One of the fundamental rights is the spread of knowledge through the news, correct? Whenever I was going through high school, my dad used to, uh, and that is my father, everybody, Curry Axon. <laughs> We would, uh, I'd play football on Friday night and then we would um, Saturday morning wake up and we would go to um, any sort of breakfast joint and we would read the newspaper, okay? And even though that, that seems inconsequential, the fact that he had that newspaper to read is what, what I believe, what we used to call it was nostalgia, but I guess now they call it, that's one of our core memories or something like that, you know? But, you know, and that seems inconsequential. It does, okay? But the fact that we have these fundamental rights, they contribute to reason in our society, correct? Okay, does anybody disagree with that? It should be almost done here. These charges are not inclusive of each other, okay? If you believe that, she, that Mrs. Wilkinson is not guilty of resisting without violence, but you believe that she may have committed disorderly conduct, that does not mean that you have to find her guilty of everything. Does everybody understand that? Okay. I don't know what the sentence is here in the state, but <clears throat> there's most likely not jail time unless she has priors. That the state has not proven an essential element of the offense that she's been accused, um, but you think that I've done something improper. Do you believe that you would say, well, that accident, he got after William Price, and I didn't like that, so I'm going to find her guilty. Is there anybody who may have that mindset? No hands. Okay. <clears throat> Fun body language. You understand what the word unanimous means? It's got to be a unanimous verdict. If you don't, if it is not a unanimous verdict, then it's not going to be... We can't come to a unanimous verdict, right? Okay. All right. And if you're not convinced that you do not have to feel pressure from others to just to come to a verdict. I stole them and ate them. <clears throat> Lots of rhetorical questions from this attorney. This election year has reinforced in me that what we're doing here today is very important. Okay. And the fact that judges like careful. you know we have this sort of society, even though it may not perfect, it is one of the best, if not the best, in the world. Talking about America, and we have an opportunity here to show that you know, explain ourselves, so to speak, right, Mr. Hernandez. Um, individuals are get, given certain rights uh, to protect us against the government. We have the ability to redress, redress the government uh, from what is wrong. And serving on juries is a fantastic individual experience. And I thank you all for being here today. Um, like he said, I know that Mr. Reader you may have uh, some inventory to do at 830, but I do appreciate you coming down. I appreciate every single one of y'all for coming down today. And um, if I missed you, please don't take any offense to that. Um, but I will not have an opportunity to come back and explain later. So. Uh, I don't think that Mr. Uh, Gill explained this to you, but once we leave this room, I'm not trying to be rude by no means, but I'm not going to be able to talk to you after this. I won't be able to talk to you until we come to trial, and the only thing I'm going to be doing is asking questions there, okay? So if I see you in the hall and I turn my back or I 
walk away or, you know, you ask me for, you know, a piece of gum or whatever, not a gun, under the table. then, you know, please not don't take any offense to anything that I do. Um, Becky Hill's an elected court official, have to follow, okay? just like a judge. Thank you very much. And we'll see y'all at 830. Judges are elected as well. Thank you, Mr. Jackson. Mr. Gill, any short re follow up? Are you good? All right, so ladies and gentlemen, what we're going to do now is Mr. Gill and Ms. Bremer are going to have a chance to talk about the jurors they want to select. Mr. Axon and Ms. Wilkinson will have the same opportunity. We'll take a few minutes, let them do that. Then we're going to meet over here at sidebar, let them pick the jury. Um, and I'll let you know as soon as we're through with that. Shouldn't take more than a few minutes. Should, shouldn't take more than a few minutes. Oh, let's, sure. Let's skip ahead just a little bit while they talk. Let's see what happens here. Oh, there he comes back. They're just about done. Give them just a minute. Uh, as far as this case, this is a case of disorderly conduct and resisting arrest without violence. And it's it's small town. Judges, judges all right, are all appointed and then they're retained the by election. has been chosen in the case of the state of Florida versus Jackie Wilkinson. If I call your name, you are going to be on that jury. Um, that would be... Mr. Wyman, Mr. Davenport, Ms. Brunson, Mr. Peacock, Mr. Simmons, Ms. Whitten, Ms. Murdoch. That means the rest of you are excused. That would be uh, Ms. Stevens, Mr. Reeder, Mr. Bryant, Ms. Parker, um, and everyone else. Mr. Phillips in the entire front row to not get to your names because the jury was chosen out of the back two rows. So let me talk to those of you who have been excused. I'll first give you a, 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 some instructions. I've been advised that Judge Garcia does not need you this afternoon. Okay. So you do not have to come back after lunch. Uh, she has enough potential jurors down there to pick whatever jury she has um, this afternoon. She, you don't have to come back. So you're free to go. Another special privilege you have after as being a jury and showing up is if you receive a summons under Florida law, if you receive a summons for jury duty within one calendar year, and you do not wish to come, you do not have to. What you would do is you would simply contact the clerk of court and say, I've got a jury. I've, been, I've shown up for jury service within the last year. I've been there. I've participated. Doesn't matter if you were chosen or not. Uh, I've I attempted to serve. I was willing to serve. And you can say, I don't want to have to serve again within one year. You also can say, I'm just going to, I want to show up and I'm willing to serve again. That's entirely up to you, but you cannot be forced to serve within the next calendar year in state court. You get a, a subpoena for federal court or summons for federal court, tell a different bird. Uh, nothing we can do about that. But if you want to, if you, that happens in state court, please let us know if you don't want to serve. I do want to tell you thank you for your time, for your attention, for your service, for your willingness to answer questions. Sometimes it may be personal questions. Uh, thank you for your time and attention. And those of you that were not chosen as a jury in this case are free to leave uh, the courtroom and the courthouse if you wish. Uh, and that would be everybody other than those six I named. The, six, the seven I called, please stay where you're at while the other jurors leave. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Okay. 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 Three women, four men. Looks like they got. I'm not sure who the uh, also. So we is. have our seven jurors list one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And I want to give you some instructions, ladies and gentlemen. All right, well, please be seated. So, ladies and gentlemen, we anticipate this trial starting. We're going to try to start at 9 uh, Wednesday morning. That's the plan. Start at 9. It's probably going to go until early afternoon, mid-afternoon. It's, it's most likely going to go after lunch before uh, the case is over with. Uh, I need you to be here outside this courtroom in the hallway. There's some, uh, some benches uh, by 8.45, 8.45 Wednesday. When all seven of you are here, then one of the bailiffs will escort you to the, to the jury room. Um, and get you seated in there. I have first appearances at 8.30, so I'll do first appearances pretty quickly, and we're going to try to start at 9, maybe even a few minutes earlier than 9. need you here at 8.45 uh, outside. Don't come in the courtroom. Uh, we may have some stuff going on in other cases, but we'll just wait outside, and when all seven of you are here, the, the bailiff will get you in. Secondly, I need you to show up. 
then show up Wednesday knowing no more and no less about this case than you do right now, which is frankly very little. So I don't think this is going to be in the newspaper, but you never know. Social media, you never know. Um, sometimes it's accurate. Most of the time it's inaccurate. So my suggestion is uh, if you see something, you hear something, you read something, don't if you realize it's about the case that you're about to hear, knowing what you know about the case, Ms. Wilkinson's name and the charges is really all you know at this point. Do not read it. Do not listen to it. Don't talk to anybody who want to talk to you about this case. Uh, again, you need to show up knowing what you know now so that you can make a decision based upon the evidence you hear and the testimony, not some external factor. Next, uh, we do have parking we set aside for jurors on uh, jury days. Uh, we can't. We have too many jurors on a jury selection day, so we can't do it. But on Wednesday, there will be seven reserve spots out here on the east side of the courthouse. That's between us and the Jackson County Times. It'll be on of that little that road there what street is that? is that madison street on madison street so please feel free there lift there out there to, to help you get parked in one of those areas if there's a cone there they'll be moving the cone only for the jurors so for the seven of you if you have a vehicle and someone drops you off that's fine too but if you have a vehicle there'll be seven reserve spots out there wednesday morning 8 45 i need you here um anything else from the state before we release our jury Defense, I think you're, All right. you're free to go, and we'll see you Wednesday morning. Yeah, Miss Williams. Sometimes things happen. If you remember in October a couple of years ago, things happened, and Hurricane Michael hit, and it totally changed everything. If something weird happens, if there's some kind of storm, some kind of problem, we need to be able to get a hold of you so we don't waste your time and we can notify you. So I'm going to ask you to give a phone number to the clerk. Uh, do you have any of the phone numbers for, for these seven? So we need a phone number from each of you just so we can notify you of something extraordinary happens but that's highly unlikely okay so if you'll give your number to the clerk on your way out i would appreciate it and we will see y'all wednesday thank you okay so a jury has been selected jury of six with one alternate uh, the alternate does not know who they are right now just one of them is an alternate yeah. Looks like the nurse got picked, but this case, uh, yeah. this particular case, it's a small case. It's a misdemeanor, and, uh, and it's only going to go like half day. So as far as jury do goes, getting picked, if you didn't want to serve, this is the one you want to get picked for because it's just a half day off. I'm getting ready to mute in case I can actually hear any of the numbers. They're giving phone numbers to the court clerk. Good, good, good. Those jury chairs look super, super comfortable. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. They've got twelve there. They look nice. Armrests, padded. Anything else we need to do here with All right, our jury is outside the courtroom. My plan, counsel, would be to start, as I told the jury, at 9. So I don't want to hear any pretrial motions Wednesday. I want to hear them before then. I know we have one motion. It's, it's styled a motion to allow testimony of unavailable witness filed by the defense. Um, is the state opposed to that motion? Do we need to have a hearing on that? They are. Yes, Your Honor. Okay. Let me, let, me, let me try to clarify. I believe in this case, at one point I was asked about a witness appearing remotely which the state was not opposed to, but this is not the same request. This request is to introduce the deposition of the same person rather than appearing remotely. Is that right, Mr. Axon? That is correct, Your Honor. I think that we've had some issues and I have tried to um, get him to appear remotely. Um, I, I, I think you are aware that he does have health issues and um, we have called and called and tried to um, work it out, walk him through how to do the Zoom. And um, I think that he, is having issues um, logging into He's Zoom. In this, and, and my understanding is that he is um, number two on the list for a heart transplant. Um, and I, I don't know if he, if that would happen within the next two days or not. Or not. Is he currently in the hospital? Yes, Your Honor. He's at University of Florida Shands Hospital. <laughs> okay. Um, so when do you suggest we hear this motion, Mr. Axon? Do you want to do it today? Do you want to do it tomorrow? It's really the only choices we have. Uh, we can do it today, Your Honor. Um, I, I will be honest with the court. Uh, I did do some research on case law, and I believe that the case law on this is 
against me, and I think that I may end up having to withdraw that motion regardless. So, do you want to proceed on the motion now? Is what I'm, I'm I, I, I think that we would just re- withdraw it. Okay. You, wow. It's your decision. Now, I don't know. I haven't looked it's at the case law, but obviously fight. you have. Um, given the circumstances you have, you want to withdraw the motion. Okay. Yes, Let's talk about the backup plan then. Um, is it possible? Uh, I'm not going to ask you about defense strategy, but the state was not opposed to him appearing remotely at some point. And is that still the case, Ms. Brimmer? It is, Your Honor. So if these kinks can be worked out, my only condition would be that we've got to identify him, but as long as we identify him and place him under oath, I just can't have uh, anyone else in the room giving him guidance or instruction. Um, so if someone sets up the recording and leaves the room and he's only one there, as long as it's audible and, and we can hear him and um, he can hear your questions in the states, then um, I'm fine with that. Uh, other pretrial issues from the defense. I think that we did have at one point in time a pending motion in limine. However, I would withdraw that motion as well, Your Honor. Okay. So nothing else on the defense side that you're aware of? Nothing, Your Honor. And Ms. Brimmer? Defense is surrendering. No, Your Honor. Okay. When are we going to be able to get a, uh, a draft of the proposed jury instructions? I emailed you a copy on Sunday. It's kind of late afternoon. There, there are some corrections I already know that you made, but at least I got you. And Ms. Traxon, you've got that also? Uh, I did, Your Honor, and I've looked through it uh, this morning. Um, I think that the other Ms. Traxon had mentioned that we may want to add something to that. And, okay. Um, the grants. So just as long as you have a chance to look at that before Wednesday, we'll – obviously we can't finalize that until after uh, – after we close all testimony. All right, Ms. Bremer, Mr. Gill, anything else before we adjourn for the day that we need to address, knowing the plan's going to be to start at 9 Wednesday? I'm going to ask that you be here at 845, Council. Um, Ms. Wilkerson, please be here at 845. Anything else from the state before we adjourn for the morning? No, you're right. Mr. Axon, anything from the defense? Nothing, you're right. All right, so we'll, we'll reconvene at approximately 9 a.m. Wednesday morning, the 27th, and court is adjourned. There we go. So they're going to be done with that one for now. And I think we're going to, we're going to break for lunch and then we've, we've got a short day. I realize it's a short week. Um, I've got some plumbing to do. <laughs> There's always more plumbing to do. Um, and I think we're going to get set tomorrow morning. The, the Arizona case that we heard the openings for on Friday that took forever, took like six hours for those openings. Uh, tomorrow morning, the in Arizona, which is in like noon, our time, the case begins. This is going to be a late trial for those that are that are located somewhere other than say like the the West Coast. It's going to be it's going to be late. It goes late, late, late into the day every night. Um, so so we're going to be picking up the trial. I think Eastern time. It's about twelve thirty. Is their morning? That's the start time because uh, they're like three or four hours uh, at, behind us. So. It's going to be a late start, and we'll be starting, but it will be live tomorrow as we, we begin that case. We think it's going to go a little bit faster than it went with the openings, which were terrible. Um, we think the evidence will go a little bit quicker. I think it will also be spicy. I think this is one that's worth sticking around for. Um, I appreciate chat being just the way you're able to handle the, the difficult topics that come up in this trial. You guys have been wonderful. I appreciate that. Thank you very much. But, uh, yeah, as long as the openings, as long as the questioning doesn't go like the openings, it, it's going to be a great trial. Why is Arizona court closed today? Uh, it's something they do. The court just doesn't, they don't, they're not open on Mondays. They work like four tens or something. I, I just, I don't know the exact reason, but we've seen that before. Sometimes it's a Friday they don't work on, um, but uh, it is, it is what it is. We have to deal with that schedule. They went through all the evidence in their openings. The rest of the trial should go fast. Uh, now we still have to admit the evidence, but uh, I think, I think that should be pretty easy. How's the bathroom remodel going? Uh, Dodie, we have indoor plumbing again, which is wonderful. That was like my birthday present to myself. We got that Friday night or Saturday night, and uh, it was good. We are going to kick you out of court. Look what we had today. We've had, we've had recap from the openings. We had a high-speed police chase. We had some Judge Boyd. Um, I think we missed Judge Middleton. Um, we had a little bit of – we had a jury selection on camera that we could hear most of. That was really good. So we've had a lot of good stuff this morning. I'm excited. I think, actually, I've got some friends that were requesting. Um, they said, if, if there's an opportunity, is there a channel, is there a video they can watch for their kids that would teach them how the judicial system works? And, uh, and I was looking at this trial that we just watched the jury selection on. I'm thinking, yes, this would be a fantastic one for that with Judge Mercer. 
but I need to make sure they're recorded. Okay, come on, come on. Judge Mercer. Okay. Why is it not going? Okay. I can't get my mouse to work right. State v. Wilkerson jury. That is, I think this would be a good one for kids because it's the content is good. It's not. Uh, it's not difficult that way. Anyway, uh, let's see. You were excused once from jury. Judy, thank you. I appreciate that. It, this has been a fun, a fun, uh, fun day. We did watch some of the four wheeler chase. The ending, uh, the dismount. I'd give him like an eight point seven out of ten on the dismount. It was pretty good. It was assisted. That's why he didn't get full points, but. All right, we all oh, we watched the Becky. We watched the the um, clerk Becky Becky Hill. We watched her resignation as well. So we've seen we've seen a lot of things today. It's been busy. All right. With that said, we're going to call it for lunch, and then I'm going to give you the rest of the day off, and I'm gonna I'm gonna work a little bit on my my bathroom so that we can hopefully put start putting flooring in tomorrow. That would be awesome if we can get that far. And maybe we'll give you an update once we get it looking a little bit better than it does now. <laughs> Wish we could get a follow-up on the ATV. It's probably going to be some time. I imagine arrest, arraignment might happen in the next 24 to 48 hours. Um, then depending on, on what it happens on camera like this, the odds of them going to trial and fighting it are very, very low. So it's, it's very little you'd hear about. You might be able to find a sentence, though. You might find a sentence. If any of my sleuths want to dig into that, that would be great. Uh, Amber, you get some actual work done. Your boss will love it. Um, thank you. I want to say one more time, thank you to all of you who sent birthday wishes and and uh, cards and, and <laughs> treats and, and everything else. I'm going to run to the post office. I think there's one more waiting for me. Uh, thank you. Thank you very much. You guys are amazing. Uh, it's, uh, I had a wonderful, wonderful birthday. I've never had this many people work, uh, wish me a happy birthday in my life. So that was that was really fun. Yeah. Just gonna put everything back where it goes, so it will be where I find it when we go live again, in case something happens. But uh, as it stands right now, we're gonna call it for today. Tonight, when you go home, please hug the people you love, smile at someone, make their day just a little bit better, and please stay safe till we go live again, which will be tomorrow morning with the Arizona trial, Mr. Kelly out of Arizona in the uh, the border shooting trial. And uh, hopefully it'll be spicy and we'll kick off with a bang. But we're probably going to have a late start tomorrow morning because the it, trial itself doesn't start till 1230. I'm going to look and see if there's something else we want to do first thing in the morning and, and then start trial. But we're going to be working late. So we'll see you then. You guys have a good one. Bye-bye. When are we going to break for lunch, Judge? This is not Burger King. People do not get.